No like Jumper, it. coolest podcast in the world. We're in here today with the one and only Big 50. Yes. I've watched a lot of clips online. Okay. And you are a fascinating individual. I don't know if I ever spotted a, a woman on the internet who had the kind of just charisma that you yeah, got. Yeah, I got that, Adam. I it's a whole that. different level. Yeah, I, you know, it's levels to the sh anyway. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I grew up in Detroit, east side of Detroit, kind of rough, mm -hmm. in a household with uh, lots of aunties and uncles. Okay. So that was interesting to me because mom left home. Left dad, so mm -hmm. we want we was daddy girls, so we want to stay home. And so Detroit at the time, I mean, there's a lot of conversations now about it basically being a shit hole slash yeah. maybe being on the way back. Maybe well, only that's certain a big parts. Maybe, right? yeah. Certain parts. Okay. Only certain parts is only way back. Was it still thriving at all when you were a young uh, girl? Or? Yeah, I mean, you know what? Uh, we were the Motor City. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So we got some good to come out of Detroit. You know, mm -hmm. I want everybody to take Detroit as being the always the bad. But we did have some good. We had Motown, you know. We got the automotive, you know, all the big three, you mm -hmm. know. Um Remember the World Series was here with the Tigers, but that shit went crazy. You know, mm -hmm. they got the killing and shooting and burning. Really? But we had some good. We got some good to come out of Detroit. You know, Tommy Hearns, uh, what's that? Joe Lewis, Barry Sanders, all them, all the good boys. When I talk to people who are from Detroit, it seems like regardless of what the economic status might be, mm -hmm. there's always been like a real culture about it. Yeah, very cultural. Right. Yeah. And so your childhood, tell me a little bit about it. Um, well, I grew up with a mother and father, Mary. Um, my father worked for the automotive. He worked for the, one of the big three. Mm -hmm. My mom at the time was a stay-home mom, and then she wanted to go get a job. You know how that is. So she went and got her little job working as assistant for nurses. Mm -hmm. And my father was a cheater. Oh, okay. <laughs> he was a big one. He was a big, bad cheater, too. And being that I was uh, daddy's girl, I always was right there with him when he cheated. So I was kind of more of the lookout. So you, you know? were forced to keep your dad's secrets from a very yeah, young yeah, age. Yeah, I, de I definitely kept his secrets. So it was times where um, she would throw him out and she'd wake me up. Get up. Go with this motherfucker. So she saw you as his yeah. confidant. She yeah, knew that yeah, you were in yeah, on this. Yeah, because I'm, I'm in on it. I'm in on it. You know, he cheated with the next door, <laughs> PD. He cheated with this one, uh, Regina across the street. He cheated down the street with this one. He just cheated in the neighborhood. Wow. He's just a neighborhood whore. <laughs> That's crazy because, okay, I have a three-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. This is my first foray into parenthood. Okay. And it is, like, impossible for me to imagine my daughter, because, like, her, her and my girl are clicked up like this. I mean, I love my mom. We were close, but my dad, see, this is what he used to do for me. Every week when he come home from the plant, he'd have me a pair of shoes mm. and a dress. Okay. So every week I had a pair of shoes. I had so many shoes. I'm a shoe person right now. Mm. I had so many shoes, Adam, to I would throw the other pair in the garbage Every week he brought me a pair. So my parents was like, where's all your shoes? I thought that's what you're supposed to do. You throw them away, put a new pair on. Uh -huh. So dad was good like that with me. Right. Until one day, I think I was in a kindergarten. And you know, I was in kindergarten back in the day. I had those little wooden chairs, the little wooden tables. Mm -hmm. I was trying to show the little boy my shoe, and he wouldn't look at it. So I picked the chip and, I picked the chip and hit him in the head with it, bust his head open. I was kicked out of the kindergarten, the whole school. <sighs> kindergarten? Yeah, Jones Elementary. I, had to, I was bust to a whole new school. So who, who taught you that kind of move? Somebody doesn't uh, reciprocate well, just, your advances, you got to break a chair over there. Yeah, head. I just, I didn't know why I did. I just didn't like him not looking at my shoes. I was patting my feet. Right. I wanted him to see my damn shoes. Wow. He wasn't paying me no attention, so I said, oh, I get your attention this way. So. But prior to that moment in your life, had you witnessed people use violence to get their way? Well, yeah, because, you know, I, I'm in a household where my uh, my mother wasn't really, she didn't smoke or really drink at the time. My father was a weekend drinker. Mm. Okay, he didn't drink during the week. So the weekend drinking come in. And, you know, he had been out with the ladies. And he talked in his sleep. So he told all this business anyway. Oh, my God. He's he one of them. Yeah, wow. he was one of them. So my mom will always, you know, hit first, strike him. And then they get up and they be fighting. So I come out. What's going on? Leave my daddy alone. I always took my dad's side. I don't know why, but I did. 
So I had to get throughout the house with him all the time. So when they broke up, I stayed with dad. The the sleepwalking thing, you want, you want to know why that just impressed me so much? Is mm -hmm. I just got hit with like a wave of nostalgia. Because like 20 years ago, there was a girl. I'm fresh out of high school. There was a uh -huh. girl that I was into. Uh -huh. And she had this <laughs> bum-ass boyfriend. And it was the kind of thing where I'm just like talking you to just, her. I'm right, listening right, to her. Right. And then she goes on vacation with this dude. And he airs himself out for cheating while, oh, he's sleeping. while he's sleeping and yeah. i thought this was like the first person this no, ever happened my to. dad did it all the time my yeah. mother even took crazy glue or some kind of glue and stuck his wee wee to it wait yeah she did that she lined his dick with yeah, crazy glue and, and then and stuck it to him yeah she i mean he was talking too much i mean he's he talks he tells it all that's he's all oh, ruby <laughs> don't do me like that ruby that's like arguably <laughs> worse than some lorraine Bobby because she cut the it up. Yeah. You put super glue she on it. The glue and when I it pull it off my it. stomach, it's going to rip all the <laughs> yeah. hair off the front yeah. of it. It's going to be yeah. ugly as fuck for life. I yeah, can't have that's that. That's what she did to him. <laughs> what the f <laughs> Holy sh So, did you get kicked out of kindergarten or what were yeah, the, the repercussions yeah, I of it? Out the, I, I got kicked out. The whole school. I had to go to another school. Really? Yeah, a whole new kindergarten school. And what memory do you have of what your parents said to you about this? Um, They just asked me, why did I do it? I said, well... He wasn't paying attention to my shoes. Dad burned his <laughs> shoes every week, and I wanted to show him off. He didn't pay no attention, so that's why I did it. Wow. Yeah. It was times where I was mad at my mom, and back in the day, you know, pot ain't legal. Mm -hmm. I rolled up my homework and took it to school and gave it to the teacher with the pot in it. You gave her a joint? Yeah. She said, what is this? I said, I don't know. My mom and dad smoke it every night. <laughs> <laughs> what did your teacher do? Called home, like, please, get up here. What is going on here? But she didn't call the cops about the no, weed or anything? No, she just okay. called my parents. I, they both denied it. We don't know. We So they were babysitting her. They, <laughs> I was like, no, this is what y'all smoking. Right. So, I mean, the, the conversation about parenting always kind of goes right, back to, like, right. nurture versus nature. So were you just a natural psychopath, like, or, think, or do you think that you inherited it from your parents? Uh, nope. I just think it was natural for me because I was kind of like class clown. I always talk shit and can bag it up. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? I am always was that shit talker. I had a little boyfriend during that time in school. I never forget telling him uh, he had to give me his lunch money every day for a whole year. He said, why? I said, because I want your lunch money. You like me, right? He said, yeah. So when he didn't want to give it to me, I act like I knew karate, some crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is in like, but this is like the era of like kung fu movies yeah, and shit. Yeah, so sorry, this was yeah. actually applicable. Okay. I act like I know the crazy shit. <laughs> so I started, you know, chopping his ass. Wow. Until one day his brother come up and was like, you taking my brother's lunch money every day. You've been doing this for a year. He said he'd be hungry at lunch. What? He's a boy. He shouldn't be hungry at lunch. And he said, well, you shouldn't want two lunches. <laughs> I mean, the the level of, like, manipulative behavior yeah, that you're describing right there, I don't know if there's really enough time for a kid to learn that by first grade I, I, or whatever. I, I feel like that's kind of got to be in you. It's in me. I mean, I don't know where. My father was tall, very slim type guy. Ladies like man? Like I said, huh? Ladies man? You said he was he's cheating. He's a ladies man. Okay. Yeah, he's a cheater. Tall, very slim. You know, nice hair, you know, and he never, man I guess he manipulated women because anytime you can go with the girl next door and she be quiet when mom come out and say hi, mm. you know, kind of sort of like a Miss Parker thing. Yeah. Know? So, that's you why know, maybe that's the manipulative type thing. I've never been a I great that from. cheater. It's hard for me to imagine, like, keeping the other girl oh, quiet. Oh, well, you've never been a cheater? I mean, okay, I was a cheater, but... Yeah, Just not at the scale that I feel like you're describing with your dad. Yeah, I mean, I grew up to be a cheater, too. Yeah. It's kind of fun. <laughs> That's not surprising based on everything else you said here. It's kind of fun. It was kind of fun. You no, know? for sure. I would describe, like, a big chunk of my life, my my fetish or, like, the thing I was into, Dead I think, was it. having a girlfriend uh -huh. and then a lot of other girls as well. Right. And, like, just a lot of other girls. Just a lot of girls, period. I don't think yeah. that would have necessarily did it. Yeah, I, I really so like the feeling you, of you do it in spark. deceiving yeah. someone. No, well. It's kind of f***ed up. Yeah, it's kind of f***ed up. I don't like that dad, about myself. Dad, dad, dad enjoyed it. I, I'd be in a car with him, and he'd be in the front seat, and I'd be looking in the back like, here she comes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's running down the street with her back. But you think you were just motivated by the dresses and the, the shoes and I the think so. material? I, I like this stuff. Mm -hmm. I just liked it. I don't know why, but I liked it. My dad did it every week. He brought it home every week. 
Right. You know, I got a thing for fashion, for stuff. I like stuff. Definitely. So so he embedded that mm -hmm. in you. He embedded that part. Got like it. I said, mom was kind of calm. Mm. You know, she was calm for a long time. So as you get older, what what kind of stuff do you start getting into in high school? Uh, well, before high school, um, I ended up having a little fight where I put the girl eye out. I think I was 12. Oh, my God, with the stick. I yeah. forgot <laughs> about this story. Oh, I listened to this like a few months ago, and I forgot about it till right now. I was 12. I think I was 12. And see, people think, oh, she hit that girl with a stick because her eyes was green. And, you know, they just don't know. I was a kid. Things was going on in the household uh, when I had to go to my grandmother's house, you know, and just a lot of anger, you right? Know, a lot of anger. And then, you know, I'm 12 years old, had some kind of lemonade. I don't know what kind of goddamn stand, but me and a couple of friends that I grew up with, the girl, we, we let her keep the money because she was the oldest. Right. And she spent it all. She spent the money and had the nerve to come over there with her little gym shoes on and her little dress. Where's our money? We got to go to, you know, there's a little store called Kingsway. You remember the white punk and seat gym shoes? We wanted to all get a pair of those and she spent the money on herself. So. Right. Somebody pushed it to me and I pushed it back to them. And they was pushing her around like it was three of us in a circle pushing on her. Uh -huh. And then they pushed it to me and I just got angry at them. I just Grabbed a stick up and it had a little point to it. But, you know, I was always taught. We walked a very long way to school, right? Mm -hmm. So my grandmother used to say, hide bricks and sticks in the bushes, you know, for protection in case you get the crazy men come around trying to grab the girls. So I always lined that up. Wow, that's smart. I did that for years, sixth grade, eighth grade, lining those sticks up. So... My grandma had always taught us to pick up something. You know, somebody come after you, you better hit him with the stick, you better, you know, hit him with the brick, something like that. So I just, my first reaction is to pick the stick up. Hmm. And I jugged her in the eye. Right. And I brought it home. So not only did you hit her in the eye with the stick, it, it but it impaled off. the eyeball. Eye. Yeah, it came out. So you're walking around with an eye on a stick like yeah, a shish kebab. Like a shish kebab, yeah. That's fucked. That's like yeah. the gnarliest mental That was crazy. I remember watching that clip for the first time a couple months ago, and mm -hmm. it's 11.30 p.m. I'm smoking weed, <laughs> oh, about God, to go to bed, damn. and I'm literally <laughs> sick to my stomach. Like, it really <laughs> fucked me up just picturing a little girl with a, a eye on a stick. stick. Can you believe that shit? I was, <sighs> oh, that was terrible. I brought the stick. I brought the eye home on a stick behind my back, mm. and I had the little blood on me. And my grandma said, "What have you done?" Right. I said, "Well, she deserved it." Mm. She was like, "What did you do?" I said, "She deserved it. She stole our money." Mm. And she was like, "Stole? You don't even have a lot of money." I'm like, "But she stole what we had." Right. And I went on in the house with the. She before I went in the house, she grabbed my hand up, and the eye was on the stick, and she took it and threw it. What? And what? Rhonda? What was her reaction? Just she like, was like, my dog, what? You know, my daughter is my capable of great evil. Yeah, yeah. my granddaughter. Right, I was granddaughter. Grandma. And she was out done. And so was that girl just rocking an eye patch no, for the rest just, of the Well, yeah. Um, her eyes was a green eye. She was a green eye girl, fair skinned girl, uh, black girl. And I just, the fact that her. I, she's an attractive girl. The fact that her eye is gone, she's walking around with no eye. I, and, and years ago like that, they didn't do anything really much but make, like my parents' um, bank accounts was drained. They took money from your parents? Yeah, yeah, they had to pay for her eye. She had a glass eye that she had to get. <sighs> and uh, being her eye color's green, I don't know if that was more money, you know. Uh, she... Um, end up growing up, they moved away. What I last heard, they had moved to Indiana because when I was in prison at this time, uh, she knocked on my grandparents' door and was asking, was I there? And my uncle was like, no. Oh, but you're talking about like many years later yeah, when you're a full, years full later, adult, yeah. she stopped yeah. by to see you. Yeah, it, 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 because she wanted to know why it happened. Oh, okay. You know, she wanted to know what really, really took place for me to do this. So really, I believe she was like, she really did this on purpose. She really didn't like me. But I was just young. I was a kid. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what people don't get. I'm a kid, and I was angry, you know? And my uncle, when she stopped by, my uncle said, you know, 
Rhonda's not here. She was like, well, I know she's grown up and moved away. Can you give her a number for me? My uncle said, she's in prison. Mm. She said, oh, I thought she'd be there one day. Uh, so she probably felt that as me being a little angry kid. I mean, honestly, like prison basically exists for the people who stab people's, people's eyeballs eye. with sharpened wooden sticks <laughs> and then carry it around like a shish kebab. <laughs> that is really like what the prisons <laughs> exist for, right? Right, right. Um, okay, I've had a few different times in my life where I like punched somebody and like fucking broke their teeth out or like really kicked kick somebody's head in good. Damn, you was fucking them up too, huh? There was a lot of fighting when I was a young kid, but like, a lot of times I would feel like just really like dirty afterwards. Like it would kind of f my head just p even if I felt so like you, they deserved you it. Felt, you felt bad afterwards. Even though I felt like they deserved it, it still just made me feel kind of sick oh, just you thinking a, about you it. You had a conscience. Yes. Which I, didn't, I, I didn't have a you, conscience. You have anything like that? <laughs> when I did, I did it. I had no conscience. Right. I didn't have no conscience, Adam. That was crazy. Wow. Do you think I'm crazy? I mean, I think if you could do that to someone as a little girl and not feel some sort of, you know, repentance afterwards. I didn't do that until I got grown. I didn't feel like that. As a teenager, uh, in my twenties, none of that. I didn't never feel things like that. I never feared anything. But as you've gotten older, older you've now. started to be able to like process that shit. Oh more? yeah, I process it because I've I've been in prison a few times. So, you know, everybody go to prison, Adam, and they want to take the drug program. Uh -huh. now, I never was a druggie. But you feel if you drink alcohol, you know, take the program. Everybody does it to you get know? less so time, right? You want it, but less time. So I took the program because I wanted the time off. I had to be honest. Yeah, I can't be but an honest You know, I took the time off. I wanted to take the time off. You know, get the time, take the time off from the drug treatment program. But when I got in the program, the program was actually a good program. Mm. I like that program. The DTSs got together, did the family tree. They did a whole family tree on you when you're in that program, right? So you figure and out your uh, lineage. Yeah. And then, you know what? They came back, it was like a panel of them. They was like, you know what? You know, you play Robin Hood in the, in, in the streets. I'm like, what are you talking about? They say you do. You rob from the rich and give to the poor. Use a Robin Hood in the streets. Mm. And that was so true about me, you know? And also they was like, hmm, they put, they did this little test where they put all the signs together, like the Scorpios, the Aries, the this and the this. And they sat back and they said, we did this test for a reason because I'm a Scorpio woman. So when they put all of us at one table, they were writing things down. And when, when the session was over, they said, we put all y'all at the table because we want to make sure we knew who was the loudest. They said the Scorpios is always, when they do their test, they always the loudest at the table. The school table. did this analysis. Yeah, well, in prison. Oh, in they prison, They did that when saying, I did okay, the right. drug treatment test. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, they did. That's how they, they do your family trees based off this type of stuff, you know? Really? And they was like, we put all the Scorpios together. We knew they would be the loudest at the table. It was just the test that they did. Do you know that if you go to England or, you know, wherever, mm -hmm. they, like the black people in England, think that the black people in America are fucking a little out of the ordinary uh, because yeah. they can't trace their family lineage in large part well, for obvious reasons. That's always, and that's, that's just not with them. It's just, it's the Africans and the Jamaicans too. Hmm. You know, they always think they're, we're different from them, you know? American, uh, black, and you're not African, you're not Jamaican. Right. But I always tell people, what, what do you think? You were African before you was anything else. Mm. You was African first. Well, it's crazy you know? once you get into the discourse between like American black people versus immigrants and there's like rivalries and right. people looking down on each other. And they do as, that. As a white guy, it's just like, oh, shit. Y'all yeah, got beef it, like it, within? Okay. That's, ain't that crazy though? How I think it's a black, waste of time. It's a waste of time. All the American blacks be like, oh, oh the Africans don't like us. I'll be like, then you talk to the Africans, no, the American boys, them boys don't like us. I'm right. like, what? Where do y'all get this from? Y'all, yeah. you, you're black, right? There are big cultural differences, I'm sure, but it's, it's I think just it's the way, um, like you said, culture or living yeah. from Africa to America. They think we had it better right. than Americans. We the land of the free, remember? Mm. So I just think it's all a bunch of bull <laughs> I'd rather went to Africa and find me some blood diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like the one person who's, who's <laughs> just no shame. Like, yeah, right, yeah. If I can get away with it, I'd go to Africa and get me some blood diamonds.
it. Got it. Okay, so, but do you remember being formally suspended or expelled after the stick eye stabbing incident? Well, I didn't get expelled from school because that happened off school grounds. Oh man, school has changed a lot. Yeah, because <laughs> so, now you're out of there. Yeah, you out of there. Now. It don't matter. They would have heard happened, some yeah. shit like that. No, I th- I did that, and you know. I went on, and and that's when my mom stepped up and said, I have to get her because, you know, she's growing up. She's doing too much. Her father's working. She's at a grandparent's house. It's time for me to take her. Mm -hmm. So my mom, you know, when when she left my father, remember I told you she was a square. Mm. She ended up joining a motorcycle gang. So she left your dad (laughs) and then basically joined something that was way more gangster than what he was on? Yeah, she was joining the motorcycle club, the Black Dragons. Okay. Back then. So she ended up being sergeant of arms. She was a tough one. Was there like a big culture of black motorcycle gangs in Detroit at the yeah, time? Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. Really? They the Soul Devils, uh the um the Black Dragons, uh the Hell Razors. Okay. Uh, you know, that was the big that was big. The Afro dogs. And they were kinda running shit. They had yeah, a they reputation running. for Hell yeah, they run the shit. Doing everything. They run the shit. Hell yeah, they run the shit. They got drank they booms farm. And uh, I think that was the initiation for the Booms Farm, drink a case of Booms Farm. What's that? That's some wine. You ain't oh, never man. heard that Booms Farm? You never heard the Booms Farm. Of no. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never heard of uh, Cisco? I know you heard of Cisco. What, the, the motherfucker with the thong and the silver <laughs> no. hair? Yeah, I know Cisco. <laughs> not this thong, weird. Thong, 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 not, thong. not that weird ass. No, okay. nah. No, it was a drink. You okay. know, just like it's like that malt liquor up there. That Cisco will wipe that malt liquor Free out. Free Mac. That's my boy. He's, he's locked yes. up. We're going to keep it up there until he gets out. Yes, and V's. What up, V's? Oh, you fuck with V's. There <laughs> yeah, you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember V's when he was a little kid. He was wow. around my little nephew now. Dalen them, yeah. That's crazy. So you know any of the other uh, Detroit superstars when they were yeah, younger? Now? Yeah, I know a lot of them, yeah. Right. The little young ones, yeah. yeah you got he, you got um you got Sada Baby, you got P yeah. PZ. PZ. Yeah, you remember do you remember um the uh, what was their name? Rock Bottom? No. Wipeout? Big so. Hurt. All them. Ooh. Anybody fuck with us? Not us. Right. <laughs> well the insane clown posse. Yeah, they were crazy. I love them boys. You fuck with them? Yeah, I fuck with them. Really? Okay. That's yeah, good I like them boys, yeah. Um okay, so you the boys, oh yeah, I like right. them. Yeah, definitely. Cash out, dope boys. Yeah, Detroit and Flint as well. Flint, you gotta give it to them. They got a whole wave coming yeah, out of there as well. Yeah, they got a whole wave. Yeah, they. It's, it's, you know what, Adam? Good, good. They're very good. But if they can stop all the violence, so much killing in Detroit. You know that? Yeah, but between the rappers who are actually popping, it doesn't feel like there's that much tension, or you don't hear about it too much. A little bit of. Well, you all you're gonna hear in our city is a lot of killing. Yeah, it's a lot of violence. There's a lot of violence. Right. These kids is off the fucking chain. I just would say that, as opposed to Chicago, where it feels like the gang killings yeah, and they, the rappers like overlap exactly. exactly. Yeah. Well, we don't hear about the rappers or the rappers' crews in Detroit getting into that shit so much. Well, the rappers in Detroit, they rival with each other on the west side, east side. Yeah. Or you can't come across six mile. You ain't going across eight mile type thing. That's mm. what they kind of be on territorial type shit. So a lot of people probably would expect you to not necessarily be paying attention to that sort of shit. But you yeah, still I, keep your I, ear yeah, to the street. I keep my ear to the street. I mean, goddamn. I mean, I don't look over my shoulders and backs no more, but I keep my ear to the streets. You know, I got kids that's 30, you know, young kids. To, you know, I keep my ears. If you saw PZ or V's or Soda Baby or whatever, what are they going to say? Like, oh, that, that's my auntie or whatever. Yeah, that, you know, we call everybody in Detroit call everybody <laughs> auntie. I hate the fucking name to be exact because I might want to fuck with me a young one. <laughs> they're oh, going to say, what up, auntie? I'm like, is these niggas that made this shit up? Call <laughs> <laughs> me auntie, nigga. Shit. I mean, I'm sure you know, but that's most what they of do. them will probably be all about it. Yeah, that's what they do. Hey, Soda Baby? Auntie? Come on. Yeah, they'll be, what up, auntie? Yeah. yeah. That's what they do. But I don't yeah. think Sada Baby's going to turn down some pussy from his auntie. <laughs> no, you, you. Not like his actual auntie. I'm sure he's got oh, aunts that he would not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know. I'll just fall shit. back there a little bit. Yeah. Um, but, okay, so after that situation, you don't get suspended. What What do you, what's the rest of school like for you there? Well, hmm, I don't get suspended. I zip through that. I hit, um... I'm going towards middle school now. Mm-hmm. I'm in middle school. 
And that's sixth to eighth grade, right? Uh-huh. So you got middle school. So I'm going to middle school. Didn't like it quite because, you know, it was a lot of game banking back then, too. You really? Know? Okay. A lot of game banking. And um, I just started hating school. Mm. I really did. I don't think it was the teachers. I just think I was too advanced for these damn kids because I thought I was kind of grown, you know? Mm. I was kind of mature, more mature in my head than I was for school. I know I can do the work, but I just I didn't want to be bothered with the kids. I started growing up. Mm. And then, remember, I'm always I'm heavy-chested. So this. I used to always walking like this, so I dropped my hands now. I'm feeling good about myself now, Adam, mm. okay? <laughs> So you were getting a, a large amount of attention from the boys, yeah, even the at boys young age. Yeah, the boys in school when I started hitting sixth, seventh, eighth grade, I was like, "Oh wow, this is it," you know. Mm. So I dropped out. It did feel like in high school that the girls who got boobs first ended up in a lot of shit because they'd be the ones <laughs> hanging out with older dudes yes, and getting we in trouble. Did all yeah. that, yeah, did all that. Hung out with the older guys. It's a curse. If yeah. your daughter has big tits, you got to be real careful. Uh, mine's got them. No, hers is bigger than mine. No, I seen. Yeah, yeah, she got some big ones. <laughs> big ass too. <laughs> yeah, she got a big old ass. <laughs> Little bitty waist. Yeah. I ain't mad. Cute at in the face. I ain't mad. Yeah. Um, but so, okay, so w- where does that take you though? Just these so, guys being the yeah, um, I remember um, me and a, a friend of mine who we were young, we were eighth grade, and our teacher was getting on our nerves. I never forget her name was Miss Chapman, and she was blah blah blah. But we just got on the side of her, and we both smacked her face, boxed her ears. Yeah, just popped her on you left and right, oh, same shit. time. One, two, three, five. Shut the fuck up, Miss Chapman. So got kicked out. I can go back, but I choose not to. Got pregnant at 15. Oh, Lord. Oh, ain't that crazy? Who was the dude? Oh, uh, he wasn't shit. He ain't <laughs> shit now. <laughs> Adam, that motherfucker ain't shit. And uh, He ain't shit now. He ain't never want a kid, you know? He right. ain't want no kids. You know how men tell you, boys tell you that time, I don't want no motherfucking kid, bitch. I don't want no kid. Uh-huh. And then you have it anyway. Right. Because you think that's going to bring you closer. You never even thought about that's having an abortion? That's a lie. Huh? You never thought about getting rid well, of it? Well, yeah, I thought about getting rid of My mom, she was like, no, you're going to play around. You're going to have the baby. You know, some people religion, Christian, they believe in you. You got to have the baby. You know, I believe I shouldn't have this baby. He didn't want it. I, You know. <laughs> If my 15-year-old daughter got pregnant with some random scumbag. What would you do? I am team abortion. Yeah, <laughs> Let's okay. fucking handle this shit. Yeah. Like, it's such a bad was, development for the rest what, of your life, bro. But you're right. And guess what? That's what I wanted to do at the time. I was like, I'm too young. You know, I got to move on. You know, I don't want the baby right now, mom. And she was like, you're going to have a baby. You're going to have a baby. So I had the baby. And I love my baby. Mm -hmm. My baby grown, grown now. His birthday was yesterday, actually. But is it a situation where your your mom or your grandma ended up kind of taking care of him? Yeah, yeah. My mom had him so long, so he he called us both mom. Mm -hmm. He called my mom mama and called me ma, you know. But uh, I kind of grew up with him, you know. Uh, He's a... I don't want to say his age. That motherfucker try to pinpoint my age. You know, mm. they might not want no auntie. I won't do that to you. Yeah. They I'll, might want no auntie. You can keep it <laughs> ambiguous. <Yeah. laughs> you so, a little insecure about that or what? No, I just don't. You know, me and sometimes, you know, when you go to women, we just don't tell our age, Adam. Mm. I mean, yeah, damn. Does it matter? No, I mean, uh, it don't matter to me, but I also uh, have never tried to fuck with a chick who was old enough that it would really be an issue. <laughs> No, Adam, these days, you know, I'm older. I like younger men. Really? I don't know, old ass motherfucker, unless it's about some money. Wow. Yeah, if he was old and he had a lot of money, I, I'll do it. Yeah. But you like the energy of the guy I carrying like, a yeah. dirty pistol and a big wad of money and he drinking well, lean and <laughs> They ain't got to have a big, <laughs> dirty pistol, but they can have a wad of money. Okay. A sense of humor. Mm hmm. But I'm not saying too young. I'm not saying 30s or nothing like that. Oh, even 30s. Someone in the 40s or something. I'm picturing like like a 25-year-old hot boy. No, I've been to beat his ass because, you know, they don't listen. (laughs) That's what I'm thinking. Like, those types of dudes are so hard to wrangle. Adam, I've been to kick his ass. So, no, he couldn't handle me. A 25-year-old couldn't handle me. No. Okay. No, I don't think that. Like, on the level of 40s, you know, early 40s, not too late. 40s solid, yeah. Because, you know, when they get over 40 now, they dicks ain't working too good. Really? No, they just, you know, I don't know. What's the, this time, 
I don't know with this war zone. I don't know. They dicks fall off. They fall off. I mean, you know, it's just a limp. It crashes in the dirt. They right. don't. They don't. They forty year olds ain't fucking like that no more. Really? See, yeah. I just hit forty. I and think I it's feel. the. I think it's the the marijuana, or maybe uh-huh. it's the dope. I don't know. Maybe that lean fuck them up. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I think the lean makes them slows them down, and the dicks can't get hard no more. And you notice a lot of thirties and forty year olds have uh, diabetes and blood pressure problems, too. Well, see, you're and all that shit, and they take that medicine. life choices, yeah. Yeah, take that medicine, that metaf- metaf- whatever fuck that shit is, and, and it makes the dick don't work no more. Think about me, perfect bill of health. Perfect. I go to the doctor, they say 100%, you're uh, good. Nothing. And they say it looks like I don't smoke weed. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Well, like... Inside. Oh, inside. Okay. <laughs> but as long as your dick can stay hard, that's that's pretty cool. But when I talk to the male porn stars, sometimes they tell me that around like late 40s is when it really kind of starts to change a change little bit. It. Where you might not be able to well, go a couple times in a day. Well, you know, those porn stars, they put those cock rings on, you know, around really? their balls to keep them hard. Yeah. You know, they well, they got the balls. dick pills. They, yeah, got all kinds they got all kinds of good shit. They got shit days. you can shoot it up with. There's a whole world Damn, up there. Damn, they got some shit to shoot it up? Yes. Wow. And I remember one week I interviewed a a, a, a rapper, or no, a porn star porn dude star. who uh-huh. was telling me about it. And then I also interviewed like an old ass uh, bank robber dude, I believe it was. <laughs> and he, uh. he's like in his 60s and he's telling me that he got it from a doctor and he does it. So oh, it was wow. Out there. I don't know. An old ass La- Larry Lawton, I believe it was. Larry. He was like a. He's a. He's from he was, he was a robber. Chicago? Uh, I forget. He's a white dude, though. Mike Boy. Um, okay. When, when do you enter the world of crime? Hmm. Uh, I think I was in crime when I um, threw the eye, out, uh, put the eye out, okay. and then uh, that's that's one. And then um, uh, after I had this baby, after I had my son, I was like, I can't sit around here and do nothing. I got this little baby. I'm not in school. What am I do? So I remember, I think I was like 17. I met this white guy, and he was really really cool and. He was into S and M. I didn't even know what that was. Me and my friends used to hang out at his house in the suburbs. He had a hot tub back there. We used to get in the hot tub, and he used to be like, "I'm a water moccasin." <laughs> I'm like, "What is that?" I'm a what? A water moccasin. A I was water like, moccasin. Yeah, I was like, "What is that?" He was like, "I'll show you going to water, and you know, give us some head or something." Oh. I was like, wow, well, this is a water just moccasin? Surprise, I'm going right. to eat your pussy? Yeah, he, wow. just was, he was a fool. What a dude. So I was like, damn, what is he into? And one day he approached me, like, he wanted me to beat him with this thing. It looked like, <laughs> it looked like a fucking fly stick. <laughs> this is a fucking fly stick. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I whooped his ass. It got good to me. I really, I said, like, you got something else? And how would you feel about this inside? It didn't I bother felt, you? No, I felt good because he wanted me to do it. Then he asked me to pull some candle wax. Uh-oh. And it was hot. I was like, ooh, yes. He, I can beat him up and I can pull the wax on his ass. Yeah, that was fun. And you got paid? Yeah, and I got paid all the time. I mean, he used to say, open the bottom drawer, get this money. I'm like, how much? I'm so young and stupid. He's like, get what you want. I was scared to take it home. I was like, I can't take this money home. I have to hide it at my friend house. Uh-huh. So that's why I would do it. But I started getting geeked up because I was going every week. And then you know what? I used to see all these little bags in his refrigerator. Mm-hmm. I was like, what is this? I used to ask him, what is that in the refrigerator? He's like, don't worry about it. But now as I grew up, to know it was maybe some hair one. Mm. He's a hair one. I didn't know. It was in brown paper bags. Right. And then I knew he had those parties where, you know, everybody's, you know, drinking and doing the little line stuff. He's had all these good parties that he used to take me to. I'd just be looking like, well, what is this? I but never, you weren't doing the coke? No, nah, I didn't ever have it. I never wanted that type of thing. I drink, though. Where was your mind at, though? You were just focused on money? I was just focused, yeah, on the money. Yeah, right there, I knew I could make it, you know? Right. And then after I stopped messing with him, it was on the popping in. Right, because mm-hmm. for a while he was your only client, and then you start expanding yeah, from that? Yeah, I was like, eh, fuck him. How know? do you even go about finding tricks at that point in time? Well, it was easy because he had took me so many places after hours. To, I didn't need him mm. no more. I can get in. So you knew the and spots. I, I knew the spots. Meet the men, the Greek men, the Greek men like fucking ass. Did you know that? Greek men. <laughs> yeah, they really? tell you all the time. They didn't like to get their wives pregnant, so they they fucking ass. They talk about it all the time. Greek men. Next time you get a Greek person, he'll tell you. 
I mean, I don't. Most of the time, I don't want to get my wife pregnant, but the solution is not they, fuck they, me in the they, ass. They fuck them in the ass. The solution and is pulling out. And the out. Greek women like that. Really? Yeah, I always talk to. Oh, Greek they boys. fucking the Greek women in that. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were saying the Greek men like to get no, fucked in the no, ass they, by you. They, no, they oh. no, they fucking the Greek men. The men fucking the Greek men fucking their wives. Oh, okay, okay. In the ass. That makes more sense. Yeah, so that's what they always talk about. They okay. like they like the fucking ass. So, you know, at that time, um, I started saying they be you got some friends, you know what I'm saying? So that's how you start. That's why I start off with the madam thing. Uh huh. I start bringing girls to different men. So and you got, and I can get a good fee for it. So. You you automatically knew that you weren't gonna base your life around selling pussy. You wanted to be the well, seller. Saw, well, guess what? If the bitches didn't do a good job, then I got to do it. Right. You know that's a part of being a madam. If they not gonna do it, or they can't do it. I got to try to do it. Right. You know. So yeah, I got to make the tricks happy. Right. You know. And uh, but I always had you know good ladies that did you that like to get down. Do you have like a memory of the first time that you actually had sex for money? Um, with the dude, uh, the white dude. Oh, okay. Yeah, with him because that's the S and M man. I ain't know nothing about that shit. Okay, and did it, people can't tell me about that shit now because I know. Right. They be like, do you know about the saddest massacre? The S and M. Yeah, I know about that. Y'all late. <laughs> It's so fucking late. Motherfuckers had dungeons with swings and all kinds of shit in their basement and attics and shit. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's so you were exposed that to all that and it didn't scare you off? No, that shit didn't scare me off. I was like, this some freak motherfucker just wants you to, he want to get his ass whooped. That's what I say. Yeah, you just like a woman to beat his ass. Well, that's the way I looked at it. A lot of women would tell this exact same story and it would be a story of trauma and of how it was this that horrific. Shit ain't nothing. <laughs> Put a, a, a heel in his ass. He'll love it. A heel <laughs> yeah, on, on, talk, on your uh, shoe. Yeah, heel from your shoes. Put it in his ass. They like all that shit. And I've, is it the same in your mind as like stabbing the girl's eyes out with the with the stick? I don't where, think it was no different. It was just an ass. But, <laughs> right. Well, okay, I'm not talking about the actual. Just stick the motherfucking shoe with his ass. I guess shit. You know, they like all kinds of freaks. I'm just shit. saying you're, you're doing something right there that a lot of people would consider pretty traumatic. But <laughs> oh, there's just shit. something about you that's built differently traumatic. where it didn't bother you. It's sex. Think that it's sex. Sex can always sell. Right. They don't know, no matter how you do it. It's but you're a sell. very young girl, and you're putting a high heel in a white old man's ass <laughs> in a sex dungeon. <laughs> this would qualify as trauma. If you, have you ever been to therapy? Um, they said I didn't need it. Yeah, I, I think you might want to check again. <laughs> <laughs> they said I didn't need it. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you seem like you're doing great regardless. But, I mean, I, I just, I, I think it's interesting that you have all these life experiences that to a lot yes. of people would be very traumatic. And to no, you, it's they, just, You know what? Whatever. When people be talking about it as traumatic and traumatizing and all that type of shit, they, you know, they, they have some mental shit going on, you mm -hmm. know? You kind of look a motherfucker in the eyes and tell me there's some mental shit going on. I don't have no mental shit, do I? No. Okay. You look great. Okay. You look Thank you. Well adjusted. <laughs> yeah. So also, you know, they be having mental shit going on. You know, they go to talk about childhood trauma. Mm. Just like when people get molested or raped, they hold on to that shit. Mm. I've been molested before. I didn't hold on to that shit. I knew it was wrong. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't right. I knew it was wrong. We know right from wrong. They knew right from wrong. Mm. So I knew that's something I had to live with and keep going. I'm not holding on to shit in my mind to bust my fucking mind, make me crazy. I'm fucking chewing on pennies when I walk. I ain't doing that shit. Right. You know, I ain't crazy ass shit. I don't let shit like that bother me, Adam. I never did. Well, if only, I give a fuck. If only everyone could have that sort of <laughs> mentality. It would <laughs> spare a lot of people from... Yeah, they, you know, there's a lot. Of, they hold on to a lot of shit. And, you know, you know, and then fucking haters everywhere. You know, a lot of motherfuckers. They, a lot of bitches don't like me for real. Really? I don't give a fuck. No, but when you say that, it makes me think of like, there's a dude I know who I watched an interview clip with him and he was talking about this time in his life where he was, had a bunch of gangsters who wanted to beat his ass or, yeah, or kill yeah, him or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right. And he's talking about still going to therapy for it now. <laughs> it's like, 20, it's like 30 out. years ago. I'm that like, motherfucker burnt out. I'm just thinking out. like, bro, like I got my ass beat many times. Like I jumped. I never right. really had like somebody like shoot at me or anything like that. Right, but right, right. I mean, I just don't hold on to that. Yeah, I ain't holding on you know, to shit. If anything, I'm happy. Like I made it no, through I'm some, some rough shit. It. Well, I'm that type of person. Uh, either you love me or you hate me. Mm. I mean, I don't give a fuck. I don't, you know what I'm saying? 
I mean, if you hate me, that's on you. You know right. what I'm saying? Because I'm loved by a lot, okay, uh, by many, you know. Um, I helped a lot of people, mm. you know. That's one thing. The Robin Hood thing kicked in, you know, getting okay. older. Yeah, I helped a lot of people. Um, people even that watched me grow up, I went back and did some things for them. You know, the older women that was on our block, you know. Uh -huh. um, it was a young lady uh, when I was coming up uh, named Gloria. She was a shy bitch, nice fucking big Cadillac cars and big afro and tall with her thigh boots on. And I used to tell her all the time, Gloria, I'm going to be just like you. She'd be like, no, 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 you don't want to be like me. I used to be like, why not? Oh, no, 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 you don't want to be like me. Come to find Gloria was a high class prostitute, mm -hmm. you know, called girl type thing. And she got high. Uh, I think she snorted the stuff, the booger sugar, uh -huh. but she was um, functional. She was a functional addict and very sharp girl and get her money. And one day she told me her story that she was a prostitute, you know, and she got money from me. And I was like, shit, that ain't going to stop me from being like you. I'm going to get me some too from these motherfuckers. Right, it just immediately appealed to you. <laughs> right, so fuck it. But so how do you end up getting yourself into the madam position, like putting um, together a little crew of girls well, that are doing well, this? Well, it, it it's so easy. I mean, it's just like drugs. It don't take a rocket science to do it. Anybody can do it, you know? Um, when you the it girl and everybody clone you, they cling to you. It's like almost um, they clone, you know. Um, maybe a lot of girls just like me. They they like my charisma and my finesse. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of the women, uh, young girls, I hang around me. And I knew all the guys because I hustle with the guys. Mm -hmm. I'd rather hustle with guys than the girls anyway. Okay. I hustle with a lot of guys, so... I know a lot of guys, the guys start asking, you got some friends, you got some friends? I got some whores, you know? <laughs> I got the fucking whores. I don't know about no close friends that's going to do this, so I got to have some whores friends, right? Right. <laughs> Would you compare it to, like, the pimp dynamic where a lot uh, of these girls, they just need a strong figure? Well, to yeah, um, some of the girls do. They, they needed a pimp. You right. know, a lot of girls, they need a pimp. My uncles, I seen my my grandfather was a pimp. I didn't tell you that, did I? Oh, my so. mother's father, yeah, he was a pimp. And you and, witnessed that when you were young yeah, too? Yeah, all the time. And his, his kids, they they was half pimps, I say. Uh -huh. <laughs> but my dad, my granddad was a pimp. And my uncles, you know, rest in peace, Lucky. Yeah, so um, I witnessed that coming up also. I thought it was wrong for them to whoop them women on them streets like that, but I guess that's part of pimping, huh? How do you view that now? But I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't. I didn't have to whoop them. Mm -hmm. Shit, those bitches, they want money. So you ain't got to do that. Right. You know, so if a guy come in, and, you know, I have a house full of girls, the guy come in, and he'd be like, oh, I like her right there. Mm -hmm. She go in the room with him, and his dick too big. She can't fuck him. She can't suck him. I can't do it if I can't do it. 50, I can't do it. So I... Um, I call somebody in that can. How often would that happen? Like, you're really running into gigantic dicks? Just... I mean, yeah, but it was a few to come through. That only one could handle that is my girl, Brenda. She's for the rest in peace. That was my best friend. She was a white girl, my best friend, and she can handle. She tears those dicks down, baby. So to you, that's a real well, well, valuable you know what? Because, attribute, huh? Yeah, well, her, she taught me a lot. I remember being a younger. She was always older than me, and she was a dancer. Mm. She was a dancer, stripper, real pretty. She, blue eyes, danced on her toes. You know, she's always, cause she did modern dance coming up. She came from a good family, did modern dance, always danced on her toes. So every time I have a baby, a baby shower, she would do the baby shower, because I had unisex baby showers at the time. Okay. Men and women come. So I had the entertainment for the, for the men. So she would dance for the men at my baby shower. An adult baby shower, I never mm -hmm. even thought of that. Yeah, she would dance for the guys. She's very, very pretty. Brenda was my best friend at the time. <clears throat> I was very young. And um, she was funny because she used to tell us, tell me on Thursdays, I had my own apartment when I was 18. Hmm. And she said on Thursdays, she had this guy named Roberto going to come up. He comes up in a red limousine. Mm -hmm. So we go out there and I'm like, what are we going to do? She was like, you're going to get $1,500. All you got to do is do this in this face. <laughs> And I would take my shirt off and do it. Uh -huh. And she gave him head. And we go, I had my 15, she had her 3,000. We did this every Thursday for like four years. Four I said, apartment years. manager who was 
kind of knew what was going on. <laughs> yeah, like where is this madam work taking place? Like, do you just doing it in so apartments just, and shit? I just started that because uh, she taught me that, you know. And um, she the one who took me to the club. And, you know, the devil's when I first started going to strip clubs. And I had my shirt, and she took it, and she cut it, and it fell out like a heart. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm on to something, you know. Uh-huh. And then I took my show on on the road. I got it. I moved out from my apartment. I was getting older, and I got me a house. And, mm-hmm. you know, the girls would come over, and the men would call, like, what's up? What up, though? You know? Uh-huh. And I'd be like, hey, y'all know what it is. Come on over. And the guys would pick the girls. I have them walk around lingerie, cute little lingerie, beautiful women. Uh-huh. White, black, Spanish. I had all kinds of friends, Arabics. People would come in and request a white girl or yeah, they will. preferences? Yeah, yeah. They, they like Brenda because Brenda could take dick and she could swallow a dick. Wow. Yeah, they liked her a lot. Shut up, Brenda. She makes all the money. Jesus. Um, Brenda ended up killing herself. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. yeah. Rest in peace. I love her. Um, but so... Like the thing that stands out to me when you're saying these numbers is that if you were to go to any one of the host strolls around LA, yeah. I'm pretty sure you're fucking a chick for like 50 bucks. Yeah, that bucks. was some bullshit. Uh, you know what? Um, back then it was four and five thousand dollars you would get from a player. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, even the ones with the funky ass feet, you know what I'm saying? We had a nigga that had some funky ass feet. We put his shoes outside, washed his feet in some bleach and water, and this motherfucker still stank. But really? the bitches still got their money. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So now, nowadays, this forty and fifty dollars a bitch give a head for ten dollars. They get head to ride in the car and smoke a blunt these days. Uh-huh. You know, uh, so you don't have to really give a bitch fifty dollars. You can give her nothing. You you pull up a in a nice car, and smoke a blunt. Huh, you know, so that's the way they're doing it now. And I think Plows put the icing on the cake when he said the pussy cost me one hundred dollars. That was it. Right. Uh, the pussy stock went down like this. Or in the words of Pimp C, yeah. <laughs> bitch trying to fuck for forty dollars in the club. In the you club. fucking up the bitch, the game, bitch. You gets no love. You I, think, no I think love. that was it. Yeah. I think that's what it Pretty is close. too. Pimp, was it Pimp C? Pimp C. Yeah. yeah Rest yeah. in peace. Yeah. See what I'm saying? They fucked the game up. Was we, the can, ga- we can get that big money back then. And, you know? and we're talking about a time period where the dollar might literally be worth like half of what it's worth now. Worth so now. it would yeah, be ten thousand dollars. It wasn't worth shit now. We get so much money back then. It was ridiculous. Just so. Selling pussy, just having holes. And do you me think getting my cut. Were those rates so high because of the fact that you were basically dealing with a lot of street dudes and a lot of dudes who are rich off the crack game and whatever? Well, yeah, the the, the guys that are off the crap, I mean, I'm talking about the crap and the crack game. You mm. know, gambling was big in Detroit. That too. Okay. That gambling, the gambling and crack cocaine. Mm. That was big. That was real big. Free basin. Yeah, that's what it started from. The mm. free basin. Uh, air. That's what I come up in the free basin air. Right. And you know everybody was just. I think they was just so high. They didn't know what the fuck they was doing. They, well, I can't say they didn't know what they was doing, but everybody was fucking. It was drug, sex, and rock and roll. Like you right. know, everybody was doing it. I mean, part of the problem's got to be that so many women have figured out that they can sell pussy now. Whereas at that time, <laughs> there might have not been that many women selling it, pussy. No, right? it wasn't. Well, um, they called it sack chasing back then. Okay. You, did you ever hear that? No. Yeah, back in the Detroit days, bitches be like, bitch, I'm going to sack chase. So we knew, bitch, you're going to sell some pussy, get this nigga sack. You know what I'm saying? You know, it was times where I I would deal with a dude and he had crack house. I would go over there and knock on the door and tell the workers. Someone so said, give me the money. Well, no, he ain't call us or he ain't beep us. You know, the phone beepers. He ain't beep us and... And for us to call and I said, I'm like, just give me the money. So I would go over there and rob my little dude crack house for the with, money. With no yeah. gun, just Yeah, just, just ask for they it. give it to me. Wow. Yeah, they gave it to me, you know? The crack? I mean, back then, you can do that. Now, I don't think, no. you open up a crack house, you're going to get busted. You need rules. You, they're going to kill your ass. They'll do all kinds of bullshit. Right, yeah. But Crime ain't what it used to be, huh? No, nah, it's not. It's not. It's crazy now. You yeah. know, everybody want to sell something. I don't know. They selling the fake pills and all the bullshit. You know, that's when I knew it was over with for me, when they when the heroin came from heroin to fentanyl. Mm. I'm like, I don't want to kill nobody. Yeah, that's just insane. And then your your real Percocets that people take with pain turned into fentanyl Percocets where everybody dying. Yeah. So, yeah, the kids is fucked up and crazy out here. That's why I advocate a lot for women and girls uh, prison because I have a 501C now. 
You advocate so, for prison. Prison women. Okay. Women and girls. Okay. You know, from this reform, right. prison reform. Um, and for young girls, at risk teen, you know, I go and talk, speak to a lot of young girls, you know, because they think that all the glitter is gold and it's not, mm. you know? It's not. I get in my DM all the time, Big 50, I want to be like you. I'll be like, why? <laughs> because, bitch, you would go through the storm trying to be like me. The best thing that they could do is try to learn from a lot of the mistakes. That yeah, that's right? all they can do. You Come on and get in this DM and learn. Right? You can't be like me. Mm. You know, all you're going to do, you're going to look over your shoulders all the time. You know what I'm saying? I can I can sleep comfortable now, you know, because mm -hmm. it was all about the money. I ain't never owe a motherfucker shit. Mm. You know, everybody always talk about, oh, you sold drugs with this one. You did this one with that one. You did that one with that one. But, yeah, I, I, I took care of myself and my children, you right. know. My kids had a private bus service picking them up. And didn't know why. they just be like, we want to ride the cheese bus. We want to ride the DOT. <laughs> be like, hell no. Nah. Why you can't? Why we can't ride to be normal like the other kids? This bitch, you ain't normal. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're not normal right now. So were you fully in the madam game as well as the drug game at the same time? At the same time, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the drug game out wore the madam game, though. You know, because uh, I think the girls get older. Mm. Me and I want no... When they get older, they don't want no old bitch, you know what I'm You got to kind of constantly replace yeah, you your clientele. Yeah, you got to keep picking huh? and young, and I don't want to be dealing with that because times are changing. Mm. So I, dope was easy for me. You know, selling drugs was easy for me. Right. You know? Because you already had all the connections yeah. and everything. Yeah. If a girl wanted, a, if a guy called me up while I'm doing my other business and say, hey, I'm looking for a hot bitch tonight, I know to call one. You know? But how often are you encountering the cops throughout all this? Are they oh, on your God. ass or... Well, you know, I be in other people's house and get raided with their ass. Really? You know, motherfucker had drugs in their house, so I done been a few of them, like four or five of those raids. And were the cops real familiar with you? Well, yeah, they got familiar with me. Yeah, mm. they always. Why are you always here? Mm. Shit, I'm in the middle. I ain't telling them that, but you know, y'all figure it out. You right. know what I'm saying? You're trying to act like you're just a regular. Yeah, hooker. I'm just here. Yeah. I'm just here. I'm partying. I know the guys here. You know, uh -huh. the houses got raided a lot, and then. And went from that to my own shit. Right. Getting raided. I think one of them was, look, I always tell my cousin all the time, I say, one of my cousins was a cop at the time, right? He was like Drano, Narco. I said, I believe that motherfucker was with them coming in my house. <laughs> really? Yeah, you already had a mask on and shit. I was looking at his ass like, motherfucker, I think you my cousin. Right. Because you know, now I never said nothing, but I always believe that. I always tell my cousins that. I think so and so was like was in the house when people raided. Well, now it feels like there's so many people snitching and telling that it oh, really makes it shit. difficult for anybody to get their criminal enterprise well, you know too what? far. Right? Let me tell you this: them motherfuckers snitching and telling, and guess what? All these motherfuckers is ruha ha ha, and then guess what? They go to jail, come out, and they smack fast with the rest of the niggas in the street. You mm. know that? So they made it acceptable. Oh, you can tell. Yes, yeah, all right to tell you. My, you done snitch on me, so it's cool. That's the air they got now. It's mm. fucked up. I'm glad I wasn't born in this air, because this air fucked up. Adam, if someone you know? snitched during your era, what would they Oh, be? God, they dick could be in the dirt. They <laughs> <laughs> fucking be in the dirt, dog. You already know what would happen. Right. Yeah, they ain't do that shit with us, but that shit now, mm -mm, they slap fast. It's all right to tell. Um, they always say, well, he didn't tell on me or she didn't tell on me. Mm. I'm not. I'm not happy with that type of shit. I don't like to hear. I don't like to be by, even though I was told on mm. before a motherfucker rapped me out too. Right. You know. And then they like to throw the rock and hide their hand. <laughs> These rats. They One throw, thing they throw the rock and hide their motherfucking hand. Over the last couple of years in hip hop, we've just got exposed to so many different levels of snitching, like from the super blatant, obvious shit to like more. You know, like like there's there's a rapper that we all fuck with, and it's like they they basically released footage of him getting interrogated by the cops, and he had gotten his car shot up, and somebody died, and he described the car of who shot at him, and it's like wow. that, apparently that's like the only thing that happened is he just so said he described the car. He he described the car. He didn't tell the names. I don't believe he didn't. He just described the car. <laughs> and there's like a whole YouTube world world out here of people who are trying to use this to bury him. Uh huh. Well, they will use it because you told the car. So obviously, 
that man might have something special on that car. A motherfucker mm. know that's him. Well, apparently they use the description of the car to prosecute, to prosecute him. this person who yeah, actually went to jail. Some, yeah, all that's some bullshit. All that's still snitching. Okay. And if you're not going to say nothing, you're not going to say anything. Mm. Once the cops ask me my name and I tell them, that's it. Okay. You get me in there interrogation room. You're going to ask me the same shit over and over again. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And mm. then they just took your phone. You know, they take your phone and run all your numbers off. Right. Do you know so and so? No. This ain't your goddamn phone. I be like, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> you know, it's just you can play stupid. You know. Right. They know what they know. So when they come get you, they know what they know. So why would you volunteer anything? You just volunteer all that to your lawyer. Mm. So you know, I still act stupid. I have three thousand niggas' numbers in my phone, all of them balling, and I'm gonna deny it to the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I don't know that person. You got that motherfucker in your phone? Okay, well, I don't know what to tell you. Do you think that the phones and the surveillance cameras and everything did that really just kind of fuck the game up too? Oh it? yeah, it fuck. and then everybody's so stupid these days. <laughs> they think, oh, if I call you on Facetime, they're not gonna get it. <laughs> I'm like, I don't believe that. Right. You know, you have to really have a download some fucking app. Yeah. You know, and there's some out here. They just don't know. I called one off to my daughter the other day. Yeah. And she was like, I ain't never heard of that. Yeah, I, you probably wouldn't. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. they take FaceTime for everything. If me and you really wanted to establish a criminal enterprise, I'm pretty sure that there's <laughs> apps and different types of phones. And, like, there's a bunch of smart-ass smart, shit yeah. that we could do if we wanted to communicate with each other yeah. that would allow the cops to steal to seize this phone and still not be able to link me to whoever. They, yeah, it's some shit. It would take a lot of work, but it's what you would do if you really didn't yeah, want to get caught. Yeah, it's some shit, because right now, they're going to catch every fucking thing. I don't know any drug dealers that go to that level and take those precautions. Once no, in a no, while, I'll they, see a dude who I know sees they sells be coke, old school. and he'll be pulling out like a burner phone, and I'll be like, oh, <laughs> he's actually taking this shit a little bit serious, whereas almost everybody I know is not. No, nah, because the game to change. Mm. The kids don't give a fuck. You know, kids walk around with AKs and Dracos and stuff down their clothes right. with silencers and beans and switches and shit. You mm. know, they don't give a fuck. You know, in my era, we... They didn't do that type of shit. They was more making money. We need to make the money. These kids more on who got the tightest pants on and the, you know, the motherfucker killing their balls. I know the motherfucking pants fucking their balls up. Right. You know what used to be so funny? Is the little black kids used to be like, I ain't wearing them tight ass pants, them tight ass Levi's, that's the white boy jeans. Right. Now look, yeah. rolls them reverse like a motherfucker. Yeah. You see, now all the black kids got the skinny tight pants on, busting their balls. Their mm. balls hurting like a motherfucker. But it's funny, though, because <laughs> I went to the mall the other day, and I see all these young-ass white teenagers, mm. and they're wearing super baggy fucking yeah, jeans. Yeah, they shit hanging off their ass. You yeah. watch a skateboard video, and a lot of these dudes are super fashion-obsessed. They got baggy-ass jeans. Yeah. So it's only a matter of time until the dudes in the hood start yeah. to realize yeah. that this shit is back in yeah. style. And those pants are a million times better for hiding your gun or whatever yes. the fuck you got on Yes, they're so stupid. So <laughs> the, the roles in reverse. The white boys wearing the baggy pants and the black guys wearing the skinny bush of ball jeans. Yeah, it's weird. How yeah, it's happen? weird. It's yeah. just it's like they're they're chasing each other. They always yeah, have to be kind of yeah, like it's alternating. So crazy. So, you know, this is what they do. Right. Uh, I just say error ain't for me. Are the rules for snitching different for women at all? Or is it the same exact thing? <laughs> it's the same. You know, I mean, what's different than the genders? That's the only thing that's different. It's the genders. Because if you snitch, bitch, you get stitches too. Mm. I mean, I don't, I just don't respect the snitching thing. I respect the shooter at this point. Mm. Okay. I don't really care for the snitch thing. You know what I'm saying? Because I'd have been in jail a few times, Adam. Mm. Win, lose, or draw. If they would have said 50 years, excuse me. <laughs> if they would have said 50 years. You still want to I, told. I can't. Because I, I, I knew what I signed up for. Uh-huh. You know, you got to go in this game knowing what you signed up for. Right. And what I signed up for is being stern and firm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Some of these motherfuckers got a PhD in that shit. You know, a player hating degree. Right. You know, a lot of motherfuckers do. I think uh, you know, the biggest if you didn't know test of like if women snitching matters was when Meg the Stallion got on Instagram live and said that N word shot me. Talking about Tory Lanez. Yeah, um 
I believe this. Tory shouldn't have had. Everybody was at fault there. I don't think Tory should have had the gun, but Tory was trying to get his dick and pussy shit on. You know, mm. he was trying. I think he's trying to fuck everybody. I think he was trying to even fuck Kylie. Yeah. I think it started out like he was touching on her. He was trying to fuck her. I think Kylie would have gave him some pussy, though. Mm. But she seen these two bitches going at it. She was like, get the fuck out of here. You know right. what I'm saying? But do I believe he shot her? Well, they said some reports said she did get shot in the foot. Mm -hmm. Some said it was Bullet fragments. fragments. Yeah. You know, some said, oh, that bitch know it's glass in the foot. <laughs> they said it was <laughs> well, because that's what she told they the cops They said it was glass first. in the bitch. <laughs> she told the cops that at first and then changed the story. Yeah, so... You know, poor Megan, you know, she's she's kind of ruined because of that. Them people love Tory Lane. Yeah. Tory Lane with that two pack. I mean, Did you know he had a two pack? No, he had a hair he had a hair surgery on the front. Oh, well, that's what Nikki which said. Which I have also had. Nikki Minaj said a two pack. <laughs> she said you fucking two pay is the crazy. baby and rubbing on Tory Lane's two pack. I said a two pack. A two pay is a wig. So and I respect so he it. Had but I don't think almost hair, anyone does it. He had a hair transplant. Right. They take the hair follicles at the back of your head and then and they put them, them up to front. the front. And they I say, fill I've been it all seeing out. that lately on the media. Yeah. This so, is a hair transplant. So well. your shit is filling all in. Yeah. It looks it's right, going right, to right. it's a fill all the way in. Do you have to deal with going bald at any time? It, it could keep creeping back. That's why I'm about to get my my third one. Really? Three times. Yeah. So after, Three times after the third time and it creep back, you're just going to go a skinhead ball? From my experience, I think it'd be nice looking on you. You do, my girl yeah. likes it too. Yeah, she I likes think the shape. If now. you was to go skinhead ball, you would be sexy, you motherfucker. Yeah. You're already fine. You don't think it would give off Nazi vibes to the women of color that I'm dealing with? Who no, these women of color want some white dick, <laughs> but not like Shit. white devil dick, right? No, that ain't no devil dick. That's just cutting the hair off. You didn't put Nazi sign in your head. Mm -hmm. I mean, that'd give off something else. That'd be if different. you put that mm -hmm. sign in your head, you the black women be like, oh, well, he don't like black women. I'm gonna write that down. No swastika tattoos. Okay. Thank <laughs> yeah, you. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely am not going to do that. But Yeah, but, mm. you know, the uh, culture is really changing because you're seeing a lot of white and black together. I'm just trying to find me a white boy. Really? I'm just trying to, yeah, I'm trying to date a white guy. I know some good ones. Do you? Well, 1090 Jake. Oh. I'm going to introduce you to him. Okay. He's yeah, a blood, I mean, too. Oh, yeah? You'll love him. Oh, okay. That's what I want. That's what I've been looking for. I'm getting mm. older. I need a nice little white guy we can kind of step well, work some things out He's together. He's a big barrel of a man. Yeah, big barrel? Yeah. He got a lot of money, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Big yeah. ass icy chain. He'll give you a run for your money. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay. Yeah, I want a challenge. I'm, I'm going to tap you in. Yeah, I, I swear to God. You think I'm bullshitting now. You I think I'm bullshitting. <laughs> <laughs> I want me a nice white guy. <laughs> for I sure. I mean, I done tried everything, you know. Uh, Besides white guys? No, I had white guys when I was younger. Yeah, but you're fucking but, them in the ass with a strap on and no, shit at the, at the madam house. You're no. not in love with them. <laughs> oh, well, oh, okay, Adam. No, I didn't go that far. But Oh, you never had to do that? I didn't have to do that. Fuck them oh, in the okay. ass with... Well, the one white guy when I was younger, I did everything to him. I healed in his ass. He oh, liked it. healed, yeah. Yeah. But right now, it's just like, I'm not saying... I done did the black thing. I was looking for a nice white guy. Mm. There's not nothing wrong with it. Everybody's kind of... Intertwining with some things. I want me a nice white guy. Okay, so it might have been the girl we were talking about earlier, but there was a quote in another interview that I saw of you where you were talking <laughs> about a girl who ended up killing yourself, and you said that black dick will drive you crazy. That's the one I'm talking about. That was the girl we were talking about before, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, what, what, what do you mean by that? Is it, because, you think there's something uh, about it that really I, fucked her up I, in the head? I, well, that's what she thought. I don't know. Uh, sometimes I think the white girls get with the black guys and think this is supposed to be something amazing. You know, it's all shit be a myth. Like I always said, the white guys got this big black dick and the white and the black guys got the big black dick and the white boys got the small. That's not true. Really? Or even they go on hands. Oh, girl, he got he got big old foot. So he got a big dick. Mm. I said motherfucker take his shoes off, had a big foot. His dick was a motherfucker. <laughs> Look, his balls was like little raisins and his dick was like a, pe a little thin pencil. But are you and these other women so, really consumed with who's got a big dick or not? At I mean, we have talked matter. about it. You're we, just doing your we, job, don't, right? we, we don't care. Yeah. It's just that it, this is what goes on today. Mm -hmm. We didn't care about that. But this is the myth that everybody put out, mm -hmm. you know, this one here. And Brenda, she ended up killing herself, a black guy. And then... You know, she took a whole, you know, it was so crazy to me because she took a whole bunch of uh, sleeping pills mm. that she got from the doctor. Like, every month for like four months, she would get these sleeping pills, but she wouldn't take them until, I guess she was 
contemplating, planning on premeditating murdering herself, you know, wow. with these pills. So she took all those pills, all because of a man. And she had a little uh, a address book with my name in it, highlighted it, and a little tape telling her parents that, uh, 50, you understand, she'll talk to you and tell you about it. I'm like, why me? You know what I'm saying? How people cling to you. Mm. And she felt that comfortable. And we were friends for years that she think I can tell her parents something. But guess what? I found out that that kind of mental illness went in the family because her brother killed himself. Mm. She killed herself and her father killed himself. Damn. So it was just leading up to it anyway. Damn, I never heard of it running in the family like that. Nah, That's I, yeah, that ran in the family. Damn. That suicide. Yeah. Yeah. Brother killed himself. And I remember her talking about that. Like, my brother killed himself years ago, but you would never even think that you would do it. And she never told me about her father until she passed. The mother told me. Hmm. It's like the the ultimate moment of irrationality as a person. Because even getting locked up and living your life in jail is better than being dead, right? Oh, yeah, I believe that. I believe it. But guess what? Uh, now, it's a flip side to this shit. The boys, rather, they say it was an incident where this guy that we all knew in Detroit uh, a couple months ago, he ended up, he went to jail and did a very long time. And then he say, I'm not going back. So they killed himself. A lot of people don't want to go back to jail, Adam. After two, three times, I mean, I even thought about, like, <sighs> shit, if I go back to jail, I don't want to go back to jail. I mean, had the thought crossed my mind that I will end it? Yeah, I have. Right. But I know I, I, I just believe if you do that, you won't make it to heaven for some reason. I believe that. But what was going on in your life that made you consider ending uh, it? Because too many times in prison, leaving my children, and mm -hmm. this time I may not never come back. Mm -hmm. You know, after so many felonies, I got five. Right. I got more than half of these niggas out here. I'm a habitual. So what was your longest bit? Oh, my longest bit. See, I'm a, my longest bit was three years. See, I go in and out. Mm -hmm. I'm always in and out. Two years here, three years here, a year here, a teller here, a halfway house there type person. See, the feds wasn't really happy with me. They always said, I'm always sneaking creeping between the lines. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not that. It's just my lawyers, they do an all right job. You know, you don't really know how that court shit going to go for real. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But my lawyers would do a good job for me, you know, and the feds was always thinking I was slipping through the cracks or the or the judge. I never forget going up to prison at one time when I, um, that's when I, I, before I, the federal, I think it was 2004 or something, I think I was going to prison, I think I was getting three years, and the judge stopped my lawyer. He was like, no, I'm not accepting this, and threw it back. I'm not accepting this. She's going to jail for 10 years. I'm giving her 10 years. He had to come out of his little, you know, bag with the paper saying, I capped her at three years. Mm -hmm. Because you know your lawyer can cap you, where the judge or anybody can go over that time. Mm -hmm. And she looked at it and threw it back. She said, she lucky. Because she wanted to give me 10 years. Because she's seen the activity. Let me escaping through. But so did out. you get caught up for the madam shit? Or was it, no, did it start it with was the drug drugs. shit? It started with, first it was uh, fraud. Okay, so you were doing fraud while you were also <laughs> doing the madam shit and the drug yeah, shit. Yeah, okay. I did everything, Adam. I yeah. did everything. So it was fraud with the IRS. It was big. Oh, right. Okay, so this is the tax fraud that you talked yeah. about in the other interview. Got it. Yeah, the tax fraud. That was real big. And that's when I really started to think, damn, she's a professional because you're talking about giving your lawyer a retainer and explaining yes, the tax fraud what I was to him do. Yeah. before you did it, which yeah. is the total opposite of most people who commit the crime. Yeah. And I, then... Stumble no, into a lawyer afterwards. I, I end up, uh, Adam, it was crazy because me and my friend, she's an Armenian girl. Rest in peace, Val. She's dead. Too. My wife is Armenian yeah. as well. Oh, really? Great, I love Armenian people. people. My, yeah. my daughter is half an Armo, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I love the Armenian uh, community, the people. They're That's great, That's why right? we yeah. click it. Yeah. Love them. And um, shout out to our man, Sharigan. He's like a nephew to me. Okay. Uh, Sharigan. He's a... Uh, Armenian also, and he's had, taking care of my house while I'm on. He's like a nephew to me. Though. me he works out with me and everything. Oh, nice. So I love our Armenian people. And he's my nephew. I love you, Armin. Hmm. But um, anyway, so me and Valerie Atikian, 
that's our last name. Artikian. Very Latin. Armenian style. Armenian. Name, yeah. I yeah. love the Armenian names, you know. Arlovakian. I named my daughter uh, after one of my Armenian friends' um, sister, the middle name, Ani. Mm. A N I, Ani. I like that name. That's Armenian too. Nice. And uh, so me and my girlfriend, Valerie, we decide. Uh, I went to her one day and said, Valerie, um, we're going to do a tech scam. She looked at me like, what? Because I knew she was good with numbers. Mm. She can really, she can bounce with those numbers. Very, very smart with those numbers. She said, well, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to rob from the government. Well, how are we going to do that? We're going to do this tech stuff. You good with numbers. I'm a mastermind and putting things together. That's the way. So I said, but first... We got to go see an attorney. So I called the attorney up. He said, $500 for consultation for both of us to come in and see him. So I paid it, the $1,000, and I sat down, and I told him what we're going to do. He said, you're going to do what? And I told him, I, do you think it was a good idea? He was like, well, I can't tell you that, but that's very smart. How are you going to do this stuff? Well, where are you going to get this from? I said, don't worry about it. I'm going to get it. What was the gist of it? You don't got to give me every last detail, but like, what was the basic idea of how you were going to make money off this? Well, basically, you uh, it's all about tax numbers, you know, mm. the, the, something like your EIN number, your taxpayers number. So, right. you know, you back in the day, see, they don't have that no more. You can't be as swift as us back then. They had uh, yellow pages. Remember those? Mm -hmm. The white papers, yellow pages. Oh, yeah. And the yellow pages used to have all the business tax ID numbers on them. Remember? Really? If you go in the old yellow pages right now, you may see an old building from 1972 with a taxpayer's ID number on there to let them know they was licensed. Mm. So that's the way the yellow pages used to read. And I used to always read yellow pages. Right. I used no. to always look through that. And it would always be uh, the abortion clinics would be at the very, very front. <laughs> That's just one thing I noticed when I was young. It's like, damn, the abortion clinic got the first, first the page. The first to yeah. get the motherfucking kids out of here. Yeah, mm. so. Well, because it's alphabetical. Uh, yes. Yeah, a, yeah, A, B, a, B yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or addiction. Maybe if there was an aardvark story. Or A, first, uh, addiction. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you yeah, always yeah. find that type of thing. But then it's A, D. That would be yeah, afterwards, yeah. Afterwards, yeah. But, uh, so. so, you stood to make a lot of money on this, but you said that there was like 200 people involved? Yeah, um, see, what happens is, and that, that income tax game, what we were doing was we would do a family of taxes and then they would bring someone and bring someone and bring someone and everybody's getting paid. Mm. Uh, every time they cast a check, they had to give me and Valerie the money and they kept whatever. You know, yeah, we, were, we probably were getting more money than, you know, we, it wasn't a half thing, mm. you know. We will probably get the half, and they'll probably get a little piece or something like that. Well, however it was, um, we made a lot of money, uh, probably like 70000 80000 a day. Jesus. <laughs> and how'd you get caught? Well, the typical thing somebody told. Yeah. You know, um, one of the girls went in there to uh, pick up her check, her and her brother. They both told. You know, yeah, they know who they is. They both told. Hmm. So... They both went in, one picked up her check, and she ended up telling on us, you know, me and Valerie, she told on us. And then she, um, her brother ended up telling on us too. So I guess everybody started like, oh shit, she told, he told, so we can tell, so all of them put it on us. It's a contagion. Yeah, they all put it on us. And then I had to blame, you had to blame the, the feds too, because they would go to all the people and say, with our picture, do you know them? Mm. You know, and they were like, yeah, we know them. Uh, they did income tax. You did income tax. They'd be like, you know, put it on us. Uh, you know, that's how they do. Knowing how bad the repercussions ended up being, would you have not done it? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> shit, yeah, I would have. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like other shit. Oh, was it had the PPPs and the EDDs. Motherfuckers did everything. That's but how people do. Every know? crime you could basically consider like how much you're going to benefit from it slash what the odds of you getting caught are slash what the uh, the average amount of time that you're going to do or money you're going to have to spend on the case would be. Yeah, so well, you could kind of look I at knew. every crime Let a little bit Let me tell you, Adam, when I went to my lawyer... I knew what I was going to do. I planned it. I told him what I was going to do. He told me 
Um, it may not come now. It may be six months. It may be a year. It may be five years. It may be 10 years, but it's coming. Mm. So I said, well, what would you take, you know, for the case, a case that like that, that's going to be this big? He said, give me 35000 now. So that's what I did. I, I came back and gave him that money. So he had that money. Mm-hmm. And if it needed more doing a case, he would have told me, you mm-hmm. know. So uh, two years later, uh, me and her got superseded, indicted, and um, when we got indicted, you know, you know, of course they're going. We already knew who was talking, who was telling, you know. Uh, I went to him, uh, and you know, he called me and said, you know, you they got you. I was like, okay, and they had hit the papers and everything. I was like, okay, well, come on down. And we'll go from there. And that's what I did. At this time in Detroit, was there already a lot of scamming culture? Oh, yeah, it was like it was culture of scamming. Everybody dealt everything, you know. That's just Detroit. We're gonna do it all. Because Detroit we burn shit out. The, the younger generation of, of rappers <laughs> and shit in shit Detroit, out. like they basically kind of ushered in like and created a whole genre called yeah, scam yeah, rap. Yeah, we're you know? scammers. Yeah, yeah, the scammers. Yeah, Detroit, yeah. This is what we do. There's a lot of like fetishization of scammers too. Like the city girls were talking about fucking on our rich ass you know, scamming nigga, ass. Nigga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fucking on a rich ass scamming ass nigga. Yeah. Right. Which to me kind of gives young girls shit, the a, scammers a weird make money. world view, right? Yeah, those young scammers out here, they they get real good money. Mm. See, back in our time, we looking over our shoulders because it's a drug game, right? right? Now it's the scammers. They don't have to do nothing but pop a computer, open, push one button. Right. They get all the money. They rich as fuck. I could never be a drug dealer knowing <laughs> what I know now as an adult because even if you're just a coke dealer, oh, I got 20 dudes in my phone that are buying coke off me and I got a... Think about the fact that if any of them get pulled over and searched and they find yeah, that, that shit on that them, tell. the first thing they're going to say is, here's the guy who sells it to me. Yeah. I just can't imagine gonna... taking on that risk. But the scamming thing, you can neutralize a lot of the risk because it's kind of like just you making purchases yeah, or whatever. Yeah, you, know? you making purchases or you ordering shit. Yeah. Ordering shit to the house. Yeah, but it's easier for them. Yeah. It's easier for the scammer. Less people involved. If you want yeah. to do a crime and not, and get away with it, you do it by yourself. You do it by yourself. Yeah. You know, I got this distinctive voice, right? Yeah. Like this voice is crazy, I love right? It. It's sultry. Yeah. 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 So, you know, a lot of times I would have to be quiet because I'll be picked out in lineup with this voice. Mm. Oh, yeah, is that bitch be 50? You know, I got that raspy and it can be heavy, you know? Mm. I can do a heavy voice, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's distinctive, so... I most of the times in crime, I kind of I'm quiet. Mm. Don't look like it, do it though. Yeah, yeah. Get in, I, get that's out. The, that's what the fish I slide through. Shit, yeah. yeah. I'm always sliding through. Definitely. You know, I was in jail with Martha Stewart too. I know. Uh, she was funny. She you, was a lot of fun. How much of a relationship did you manage to form? Uh, with well, um, when she came in, you know, when I came in, I'm just fifty. You know, fifty here. Okay, when that bitch came in, you know, you know, people greet you with stuff. Right. I maybe had a bag or two, you know, because you don't have things, shower shoes and gels and stuff. Right. You know, I have a little something here because I got people that's already there. She and Martha came in. She had a fucking line out the door. Mm. They had so much shit they was giving this bitch. To, even the po holes was giving her shit. <laughs> What's a po hole? A po hole. What's that? A po hole. Po hole. Yeah. Oh, oh, poor oh. horse. Okay, oh, sorry. My bad. Adam, you slipping on me now. <laughs> I know. I seem like I know what's going on, yeah. right? So you yeah. just hit, hit a little po-holes. brick wall. Um, yeah, all the po holes was giving her shit. Is, is there no PC in women's prison? PC. Protective custody. Oh, we hear got, about it a lot with the rappers and shit, well, but does that exist for the women? They they have it, you know. Uh, they you think if have, anybody would go, it would be Martha Stewart, right? Uh, Martha Stewart was a gangster. She wasn't scared of nobody. Really? She, them D.C. bitches come through there. Martha Stewart was not scared, okay? She was about to fuck Bernie up. <laughs> <laughs> we always talk about this. Me and my girls will laugh like motherfuckers. She going to fuck this bitch up from D.C. Really? She's going to fuck Bernie ass You up. saw Martha Stewart on the verge of getting in a fight. Yeah, she was arguing with Bernie. She would beat Bernie's ass. Wow, that's so hard she, for me to imagine. She was no scary bitch. Now she was nosy as fuck. Really? But she, I know why she was nosy, because she wanted to write a book on the prison and do prison cookbooks and shit. Did she actually do that? Yeah, she did a prison cookbook. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was the best in cooking in that motherfucker. But Martha, she did her thing. Did you, right. did you see 
in her personality what made her so successful on the outside, like through seeing the way that she dealt with people inside? Well, she asked a lot of questions. That's for sure. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of motherfuckers, that's, you know, they want it. They're going to ask, you know, right. what you in here for? Oh, Martha, what the fuck are you in here for? You know what I'm saying? Right. What did you do? You know, she walked around with her cool glasses on. And we stole out the kitchen, that bitch stole too. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker put an egg in her titties and get caught uh, yeah, and have to go yeah, down yeah. there. She put everything in that motherfucker. What she you gonna got, do with one she egg? She always get caught though. She, what are you gonna do with an egg? Oh, you go and cook in the microwave. Oh, okay. You know, she cooked. We, yeah. She had these things. We used to kick called crab apples on the grounds, right? Right. We were like, this shit, all these flies and different crazy bugs up in Virginia. You know, they said Camp Cupcake. That's uh-huh. what they call All these bugs and all these crab apple stuff. We didn't know what it was. Martha was like, those are crab apples. Well, what is those? We cook with those. Don't kick them. She'd get them and take them in and wash them off and came back with some kind of jelly Jelly apple pie type thing. Really? Yeah, she made something out of it. Growing up, there would be a lot of crab apples like in I my never, neighborhood. See, well, I and never. Kids we, would pick them up and whip them at each other and well, it, fuck you up. See, get I hit guess in the, head with in one the of city, them. we didn't have that in the city right. growing up. We didn't. I didn't know what it was because I'm in prison in Virginia. Mm. So, and I didn't know Alderson, West Virginia. I did not know that a uh, crab apple, what that was. We we kick them. We'll get the shit out of here. You know? right. I, didn't, I never would have thought you could cook with them, although I guess. Yeah, she cooked with them. You cook, cook with, with like them. mushy ass bananas and yeah, apples. Yeah, she knew and how shit. to cook with them. Sense. She made something out of them. I remember that. Wow. That's but crazy. Yeah, she was cool though. She was all right. So you're, you're, when, when did you get out of your last imprisonment? Uh, <laughs> just when I thought I was done. 2011, the feds rushed my house. I was going to court, me and my son, me and my older son. We was in court together. So embarrassing. You know, when they say stuff, and now and this is state state court now. Mm-hmm. See, I was so used to going to federal court. Everything's calm, smooth. You know, state court, everybody's there. Ooh, every time they say something, you know. Mm. Uh, so me and my son was going to court together, and I'm like, shit, I'm already done been in trouble three, four, five times, you know, whatever, even as a young, you know, young girl, teen girl, you know, going to jail type shit, going to precinct. So I didn't want to let my son go to prison. So I'm like, I'm going to take this and take it all, you know. And I ended up going to prison. My daughter was graduating that year, May 2013. And... I asked them, could I stay out just for her prom? And the prosecutor went in on me like, see, that's what I mean. She always do this. She always want to, she said, I do this, and I don't want to do that, and this and that. She just needs to go to jail. I was like, listen here, I'm not, I watch my other children graduate. I want to see my daughter, my only girl, graduate. All I'm just saying is let me stay out this weekend. I'll turn myself in on Monday. And she went off, you know, the prosecutor went off about me, you know, reading she don't really know me, but, you know, you're reading so many different files and learning my personality. She think I'm just trying to escape through something, you know. Mm. She's not trying to go, you know, and that's a lie. I just wanted to see her off the prom, and I couldn't. So I had to go turn myself in, and that's what I did. And I came home uh, 2015. Okay. So 15 was my last, only last bit. And I, so you're, you're, you're locked up that time thinking about how you're going to change your life when you get out? Oh, yeah. I was in there because I was in the hole. I was fighting all kinds of shit. That, that state shit is a different kind of shit. I knew I wasn't going back to jail there with all them motherfucking bitches. So you're saying the state's worse than the feds. Oh, God damn. Them bitches in there is horrible. Really? You got, I mean, I don't understand. It's just, you know, the state itself is just poor. The food says on the bags, not consumed for humans. Well, who is it for? Really? Yeah. Everybody know that. Anybody been in the state to tell you? Not consumed for humans. Not consumption for humans. But what is it for? The water is this color. You can't drink the water. You shower with the water. Your body is peeling. You know, it was fucked up. State is fucked up. They don't Damn. have no food, no money, nothing. And so you were just like, I'm yeah, not, you, I'm not you going back. Yeah, you fucking complain. See, I had boxes coming in. You know, I had money. So I don't drink coffee, so I would buy five, ten packs of coffee just for the older women that's there that love to drink the coffee. I would give them coffee so they can leave me the fuck alone because mm. there's a lot of begging and shit, you know? They ain't got no money coming in and shit mm. type thing. Now, I don't know why, but... 
The state ain't giving up shit. Believe it. And you're used to a certain quality of life. Yeah, and you're yeah. in there dealing with a lot of people that are damn near like out the trailer park. Yeah, they, it was a lot of that. A lot of trailer park. It was black heel billies, white heel billies. It was just trash. Mm. It was just a lot of trash in that motherfucker. You know, and everybody just. And then the, you know what's so crazy? They put in, instead of getting a a place for mental illness to go to, they put them in there. Really? So now, yeah. but I they like me. All the mental people, they like me. They used to call me. No, I'm for some, I'm for some, I'm for some. I believe for it. show real shit. The, the officers used to call me over to Emmett and be like, 50, can y'all tell 50 to come over here? Because mm -hmm. the, they didn't want the crazy people like to talk to me. I used to be like, now, boy, what you doing today? Why do you have feces all over the wall and all over your bed? She said, because I don't like them, 50. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, okay, they give me some hash, mass, hazard stuff. And I... Help her get it cleaned up. And I said, we're going to put powder on your bed. I'm going to take you to the shower. You know, so I would get them coffee. They let me do that with them. My, All the crazy people like me. My instinct, if I was locked up and there was a crazy person smearing feces on the wall, would be to just avoid them and not no, have anything to do with this. No, no. I wouldn't know. Because she did. The lady liked me. I don't know why she took a liking to me. She would like, they got things called a kite to fill out for things that you want. She may need medicine or anything. So she wouldn't let nobody do it. They would call me out the room to do it for her. Mm. Write a kite out, and then I would talk to her. What's going on today with you? You know, but yeah, she had one day she had piss feet. Then they had throw it on the guards. Mm. So they were like, "Can you can you get her?" And I'd be knocking on the door like, "Boy, can I come in?" Yes, you can come in. Fifty. I'd be like, "Okay, now I got to get hazmat. You know, put our shit on and bring me the red hazard bag." You ever see somebody use a Glock Dookie? What's that? It's where they take like a plastic water bottle and fill it with uh. piss and shit. Oh, they, and then you run up on somebody and you're like, ugh. give me your cookies or you're about to uh, get hit with this. Oh, hell no. Nah. No? I ain't yeah. seen that. But they're, a new just, development. they're just throw it on the, the guards. Yeah. They have pee and throw it. They have to sometimes cut their toilets off, mm. especially over in the hole. You know, they got the Bam Bam Ward and then they got this side. So I'll be peeking out seeing all the bullshit on the Bam Bam Ward. Was it hard for you to change your life and go clean? Oh, uh, when I got there, yeah, it was kind of hard. Um, I knew I had to, you mm -hmm. know. I knew I had to because I was getting in way more fights. I was in a whole, like, 40 days. Was that terrible that mentally? Was fucking horrible. It was worry back there. You lose your, you actually literally lose your mind. You know, some people come home from prison, you'd be like, damn, Jerry ain't the same. <laughs> yeah. Know? Jerry fucked up. He'd have been in that hole all, most of his time. Yeah. It's just, it is crazy. It is worry. So. No, I've had that. I've I had, had that. Yeah. I, yeah, I have did. Like, I, I thought I was going to do 15 days. I was good with it. And then when I went to see the board and, I, and they noticed that I had flat time, they ADM me where I couldn't have no, get no phone calls. I couldn't get the commissary back there. You know, I just had to stay back there and bring them what they had to bring me. So. Uh -huh. I wouldn't eat the food. I just say, give me the water and the juice, you know, a little juice or whatever. But you're just not eating. No, I wasn't eating back there. I wasn't oh, eating man. that shit. I'm used to having my own commissary. They said I couldn't have it, so I wouldn't eat nothing. Really? So it was like, you gotta eat some hood. I'm like, nope, I ain't eating this shit. And then they say you gotta go out for one hour a day, right? Uh -huh. They putting your ass in a monkey cage. <laughs> that motherfucker look like a monkey cage, yeah. a dog cage. So I ain't going in this shit <laughs> and do what? Stand there for an hour? I feel like you just. Fighting for a little bit of sunlight. Nah, I don't want that shit. I you know? ain't care. I ain't want that shit. And then you go to the, let me tell you, that hole ain't no joke. You go to the goddamn bathroom and just shower because you only can shower like, I think, three times a week. Uh -huh. And look, that's so unladylike for a woman, you know. And uh, they, you have to shackle your hands and feet and bag back up and they can put the cuffs on you, the shackles on your feet and hands and then walk you to the shower. Uh -huh. I said, yeah, like I committed a goddamn murder. Right. Walk you to the shower. You got three minutes to shower. The water hot as hell and it's in some kind of cave. Three minutes. Three minutes. You got to shower like a motherfucker. So just imagine the white girls like to wash their hair every day. So they got three minutes to wash their oh, hair and shower. No. You ain't washing some long ass yeah. hair. Yeah, three minutes. long ass I've hair. I've timed myself. Damn. And uh, I can't shower any less than like maybe four and a half minutes. Yeah. That's so. about it. Take three minutes and you out. 
Us as men, black women, I should be braided down. We look like, you know, we finna set it off. Wow. So I should braid it down. We didn't really care. We just wanted to get showered, you know. So what'd you, what'd you do to, like, make sure that you weren't going to go back when you got out this time? Well, um, I obtained, uh, you know, I do a podcast. I had podcasts. I did uh, at Vent Radio. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm no longer with Vent Radio now. Uh, maybe I'm going to come fuck with you. Oh, I love that idea. You moved to California? Ah, uh, probably the uh, price is right. You know what? Why you haven't never did anything like the Freshers Club type thing where you Skyping me in from another mm. podcast? We do a little bit of that, but yeah. I, I feel like this, the, the, the energy of being face-to-face is like the whole thing that yeah. they are into. Yeah, that's 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 sweet. But you know what? I, I like this little podcast area where me and Trick Trick did one time. We did uh, Struggle of the Streets. Me, him, and Judge Mathis. Okay. And it was this little place downtown Detroit where we just, we talked shit just like this. It was big window. Mm-hmm. People were standing outside looking in. It was cool. Yeah. Shout out Trick Trick. Yeah. You got yeah, a good relationship Trick, with Trick, him? Yeah, Trick Trick. Yes, I love Trick Trick. He's so gangster for Detroit. He is, huh? But he get the shit together. He does the shit right. You know, when he say no flights on, he means that. Right. You know, That's you his... know he's not a fake ass motherfucker. Now he go, he real real. He's he's cold with it too. But that was his uh, legacy. Who was it? Rick Ross that he like forbid to come to Detroit over trick, not checking trick. in. Uh, trick, trick, daddy. Is that his name? Fat daddy, trick, daddy. What's the motherfucker name? I don't know. Trick daddy was Tina. Shreen, whatever. What's that girl name? Trina. Trina from Florida. Trina. Yeah, 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 remember Trina and Trick oh, yeah. Daddy? Oh yeah. Yeah, he Trick Daddy and then Trick Trick. Yeah. Very yeah, confusing trick, for some trick, people, yeah. Trick Trick put Trick Daddy out of Detroit. Beat they right, beat his ass on stage, it, yes. remember? You're right, you're right. Okay. Remember? So, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, I need to come on this show because I have spru- and, then, spru- and, and that was around there. the time that Eminem did music with Yeah, it was trick, around trick. that time. Yeah. yeah. So Yeah, so Crazy. Trick Trick is all right with me. Um when you were locked up though, would you say that you ended up basically being kind of like the alpha male of the women's prison. It's hard yeah, for me it, to imagine a chick well, with, a, with more energy yeah, than you. I, well, it, when, I, when I got, it, see, in, in federal, everybody is just everybody. But that state shit, you have to be more the alpha male in there. So, because mm. everybody want to take position. You know, I'm the big boss. I've been here 20 years. Mm. But what you here for? I murdered my mom. I'm like, oh, okay, bitch. Well, you should be here for 20 years. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Bitch don't make you the boss. Right. You know, so I just had to go in there. You know, I'm I'm my regular self. People knew me when I was coming. They knew. You know, that's one thing. That prison, get it first. Oh, that bitch 50 finna hit grounds. Mm. So when I even came, the, some of the guards was like, they been waiting on you for what? You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I get there. And you got the big boss bitches want to be bosses, and then you find out a month later they really not. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? They just there doing a lot of time and talking and bullying other bitches, but you can't bully me. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of basically took over the prison. Plus, I had guards work there that was my friend from the streets. Mm. You know, so I had a lot of, you know, leeway. Right. With a lot of the guards. And they used to tell on me, too. Yeah, that 50 bitch gets to eat a hamburger. <laughs> so they would fuck with you, but then they would also kind of rattle yeah, you Yeah, yeah, well? they was tell, they were sneaking, send those little kites under the, the consular doors, like, why does she get to eat good? She have french fries, she have hamburgers, and she cook, you know, I'm like, bitch, you really tell her I can really make you a hamburger. I have people bring me hamburger, you mm. know? I can make hamburgers and Something shit like in microwave. Like a McDonald's, Burger King type shit? No, or? I like to make my own. They bring me oh, my onions and hamburger, I do it in microwave. Oh, wow. You know, so so you can just cook everything in a microwave. Yeah, basically. I, got, I did it all. Fried rice out of with Coca Cola, you know, all that type of stuff. Yeah. Fried rice with Coca Cola. Yeah, just mix it in there. Yeah, I mix it in there, and it, it tastes just like fried rice. Then you know, but with from the kitchen, from the kitchen, the girls will bring like my onions and broccolis and stuff like that. You know, mm. I cooked in there. It, look, I used to cook so much in the federal to the guards. Be like, hey, fifty. I'd be like, what? Is that you? I'm like, is that me? What? They know I cook. I said, why you say it's me? They say, because you make it smell like home. Mm. I had a couple guards I would cook for up in there. I would let them eat for lunch. 
So you're telling me that you're so committed to living life on the straight and narrow that there's no potential I mean, criminal plot that could tempt well, you back I'm into the... I'm not saying it don't come in my motherfucking mind. I have them. Yeah. God damn, I'm human. Shit. <laughs> them chips getting low, bitch, thick of all kinds of shit. <laughs> I know I can't sell no more pussy. I'm too old for the pussy deal. They don't want it. Well, you could probably administer it, right? Uh, yeah, I can administer it, but no. Nah, but uh, yeah, the thought comes across my head. Hell yeah. I mean, you know, all this easy money these motherfuckers making. I I don't mean, the fuck I can get me some. Yeah, right. the thought comes across, you know. Mm -hmm. Start getting a little broke, chips go down. You think, what you got to do next, you know? Right. So it is what it is, yeah. But mm. for the most part, I've been doing pretty good. Right. You don't say that, okay? Because I'm not, I'm not the bitch that's going to say, oh, I ain't never doing that again. I don't know what I might do. Right. I'm not fucking finna say I'm never going to do it. Yeah, I, mean, I might do, yeah. I don't know what I might bring. I might have to pick up a bag of dope again. I don't know. Right. I know. No, never say I never. Never say never. I'm not going to be the one. I said never. I ain't never come back this federal building. Bam, I was there again. I ain't coming back. This is my last time. I kept going the fuck back, you know? Mm. So I I can't never say it, you know, because the, the thought comes across my mind. Right. You know, yeah, shit. Chips get low, bitch thinking all kinds of shit. <laughs> <laughs> shit I guess, like, the, the, the goal would be if you really needed to do something, get some money, and then don't make it a consistent part of your life. Right. Because you could See, do it one time. You just yeah. probably shouldn't do it do every it day every for day. many years right. in a row, right? Sometimes you think, damn, if I get this one more lick, I'm good. Right. And I can do that and hit it. Oh, okay. You know, but it's mm. something that I want to sit there and do every day, like you said. No, I wouldn't do it. You know? Right. But uh, if the chips get low, Adam, I ain't gonna, I'm, I'm not going to sit here in front with the bullshit, you know? Yeah, it's in you. And I ain't got no relationship where I can say with with a male where I can say, oh yeah, baby, yeah, give me a hundred thousand. Mm. You know, like, bitch, beat it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like those guys are out there waiting for you. Yeah, right? I don't know. I Do don't you stay know. in Detroit still to this day? Yeah, I'm in Detroit. My mom, my father passed uh, a couple of years now. It's like two years. My mom is still there, so I, I still kind of feel obligated, you know, because we we take care of our parents. You know mm. what I'm saying? We be near our mom, you know what I'm saying? So it ain't like I, I, I won't, I will, if the opportunity suppressed for me to go another place and I got a different job or I'm doing something different, I will move. Mm. And I'll go back and forth, you know, right? because my parent is there, you know? That's a conversation we always end up having in podcasts and shit is just like, there'll be rappers who blow up in a place like Detroit or Chicago and then they kind of like refuse to leave and then... A lot of times they end up getting killed. There. Getting killed. Ain't yeah. that crazy? Yeah. And they should leave. I said the rappers, once they make it big, they should leave. Not even Detroit, Atlanta, wherever they from, they should leave their they hometown. Mm. You know, that's the rapper's thing. But a drug dealer, you can pretty much place anywhere. You right. know, we'll fit in anywhere. You know, so um, I don't glorify it. Uh, like, like people be like, Griselda, the Godmother, that shit was trash. Did you see that shit? My girl watched it, and I was that bitch was a crackhead. It was just more it. of a crackhead. They made her more of a fucking crackhead. Really? Remember, her friend was like, gave her something. She said, "Who? What is this?" The friend say, "Clack." Uh. And it was like crack, and then she started liking it. So it was more of, "I'm a gangster killer, love crack." So you know, all of us bitches love Griselda. We the Godmother. We love Griselda. I remember when she was in Dublin, I had a friend in Dublin was going to introduce us, okay, years ago. And um, I was like, yeah, I'm going to hook up with this lady. Never hooked up with her. She came home. Long story short, she ended up getting killed. So I, that was my, blew my chances for thinking I was going to get a bag. Mm. But then after seeing this movie, I said, the bitch was a killer crackhead. We all jumping up hooraying for this woman, and, and she, she wasn't shit. Mm. You got these bitches got... They fit. They pay. They page and they picture and got Gazelle on the side like they really the Blanco bitch. Mm. But you want to be the bitch? You go right ahead. I changed my motherfucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I when, changed my motherfucking mind. Though, when you're someone who's like really authentically that, and then there's other people who get famous or get the notoriety or whatever, and then at a certain point you're able to kind of see. And, and who knows? Because the movie might have made her seem like something she wasn't, right? Yeah. Or maybe it was closer her family, to reality. Her family. Her family. Okay. Get this coke now. Her family got mad. Mm. Her family got really pissed. I saw that that they're gonna sue him yeah, or some they, shit. They yeah. Going, they getting the money. Yeah. They getting the fucking money. They said. Uh, and Sofia Vergara, ain't she beautiful? Mm. She's a beautiful lady. 
they made it like, oh, they made Sophia look so ugly. Like my mom wasn't this ugly. My, my she wasn't ugly like that. Mm. You know, but in her younger years, she was nice. She was all right looking, but I don't think it was to the family like her. Hmm. And they still want to get the money because they made it like, oh, she was a drug addict. But they said everybody in Colombia, that's the thing. They did drugs. Hmm. That was their thing, you know? Right. So they just made it, painted the picture of the family thing real bad of her. Right. I think Sophia did a good job. I think she really played her. What she is. She was fucking more of a crackhead, killing. I think she was paranoid about... Her friends, her man, everybody was, she felt like everybody was out to get her. Right. She would smoke a cigarette and write to God, mother in the sky. You know, I just, I didn't want to be, I ain't that bitch. A lot of know. these old movies. She might have like, had more money than me, but I ain't that bitch. These movies like romanticize the crack era and the cocaine era. But when we think about what people are actually like when they're doing a shitload of coke all the time, <laughs> it's, it's not anything like cool or admirable. Right, it's it's embarrassing. Cool. You know? It's embarrassing. Yeah. And I think that was part of the movie. I think the embarrassment came in her family because they really showed what she was. Mm. She was a controlling crackhead right it is what it is you know that and and she controlled uh the the, the mob people you know but i i like that part of her she had escobar and all them different people she had all those people scared of her back then you mm -hmm. know because they know she meant business that's the part i liked about griselda but all this crackhead shit and you kill him for nothing you're paranoid you think your friend out to get you think your man trying to fuck this bitch over here and if he look over there at that bitch to the point he left mm -hmm. so now nah, so all you bitches that want to be like griselda goodbye Girl, we, we have a dude who yeah, fuck is on. Be her. Who, we have a dude who's on this podcast sometimes. Who's like a co-host named Sharp, who's been with us for a few years. Yeah, I seen him. I and seen him. He yeah. comes from the pimping world, mm -hmm. and he's the kind of guy where if a girl calls him a bitch, it's like the, the, yeah, the air scrap. gets yeah. sucked out of the room. Yeah, they about yeah. to scrap. Yeah, they're gonna scrap. Yeah. I noticed you basically use bitch all, all the, time. the time like yeah. when you're talking about talking to dudes yeah I, have you I, ever I, ran into any issues with well that? um i don't really call dudes bitches you know i know this is it fine if you a bitch now nah, you a bitch you know what i'm saying <laughs> uh, i don't i don't really call me and bitches you know i, I don't I always like a man to lead you know mm -hmm. lead i don't want to call you a bitch unless you really acting like a bitch right. you know what i'm saying now if you're acting like a bitch, I'm going to call you a bitch. You know what I'm saying? So if I if are you acting like a bitch and you know you're acting like a bitch and I called you a bitch and you want to scrap, then I, had them fight. I don't have a problem fighting me and Adam. Mm. I don't have the problem with doing it. So I, I see Sharp, see, yeah, his attitude, he's kind of aggressive type. I am too. Mm. I'm very aggressive. You think too. you'd get along with him? Yeah, I think he he would get along with me. Mm. Yeah, I think he would. Maybe I we think could bridge that gap one day. Yeah, I think Sharp would be all right. You know, I think he... He kind of the air like he's younger, but mm. he I watch him. He got a, kind of an old soul to him. He used to know? win like uh, the players ball. Players like ball. Yeah, year I shit. won it, too. You won it? Yeah, I won it. Really? Yeah, I won it uh, with Snoop Dogg and uh, what's his name? Don Juan. They was here years and years ago uh -huh. uh, in Detroit. Uh, I'm going to have to break out some old pictures one day and send them to you. Well, you know, I had some of my hoes come in and I won. First place, uh, Detroit. Second place, Chicago. Really? Yeah. Oh, so they do pimps all the country. Down, I yeah. Them pimps was in all Maybachs and Rolls Royces, all white, lined mm. up. Downtown Magic Grizzly. Don Juan, the only person I ever interviewed who started smoking a blunt through their nostril mid-podcast. That's strong. And didn't say shit. Just did it. Oh, that's that's strong. That didn't say shit, huh? I still think about it all the time. God yeah. damn, yeah, that's something. Can you imagine yeah. just taking a full hit through your nose? Ooh, Ooh. no, I can't. I can't do anything. I don't do put nothing up my nose. No drugs. No none of that. Nah. Yeah. I just really start smoking weed. And it's groovy. How's that going? <laughs> yeah, I love it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do a lot of it. I still use the paper, so I ain't really. Mm. You know, I might hit a little blunt here and there, but yeah, I like to smoke a little bit. It mellows me out. Yeah. You know? Same. Yeah. I don't know how I would go to bed. I don't night. drink the liquor no more. I drink the champagne and wine, but I don't really drink the liquor thing no more. I think that's where my weight loss a lot of it coming from too. A lot of people, fifty you lost weight, you you know, first thing motherfucker thing, it's a bitch sick. <laughs> <laughs> bitch on some crack. <laughs> <laughs> I also I gotta give it to you. Those are probably the most complex fancy glasses I've ever ah. seen on this podcast. Oh really? And there's yeah. been some competition. We've had some oh, wild really? sunglasses. No, but... Yeah, these are Dior's. I mean Christian Dior, yeah, they Dior. 
Are, they, are you sure they're not Dolce and Gabbana? Oh, well, it kind of looks damn, like a D is, and a G. They, is, they Dolce and Gabbana. Right. Yeah, Dolce. Okay. I'm talking Krishna Dior. I thought, <laughs> the fuck I'm going through. I think this is the weed I smoke. And I got a lot of pair of these. I got these. Oh, yeah. I got the ones with the diamonds on them. Yeah, they Dolce and Gabbana. Okay. You I wear so go many hard. different glasses. I, I got a thousand pairs of glasses. You yeah. still go hard with the drip. Oh, yeah. I'm still hard. I'm still hard. There ain't no change in me. Right. You know, even though if I'm a po ho. I was just gonna go hard <laughs> with my po-ho. Do you see yourself I'm go hard with my drip? You yeah. see yourself ending up in a relationship and and riding that out into your old age, or do you think that you're kind of like a, a solo? Well, type? if I find a if I find the right find the right guy. guy, you've had a lot of time to look. No, you, don't you think got that, me a date. I do. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. We'll see how that go. Yeah. yeah. So you know what I'm saying? I'll ride it out. I'm mm. a, I'm one. I'm a rider. Mm. Yeah, I ride it out. As long as you want to ride with me, I ride it out. Right. We can be a team. I love it, man. I like team. I like teamwork. Teamwork will make the dream work. I yeah. like the big fifty energy though, for sure. Yeah, as yeah, soon as I you, started Adam. seeing you, I was like, man, I gotta talk to her. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody be tripping like, oh, that be it. And they say, okay, you know my voice. Like, do my voice sound deep to you? It's kind of deep. Reasonably so. Not, not anything. You know, crazy. motherfuckers be on the, you know, motherfuckers be on them comments. Uh, yeah, it be sound like a man. Uh, <laughs> oh, that bitch a nigga. Because yeah. there's so much trans stuff in the media. Yeah, it's so that, much. Yeah, that's the, that's the whole world. <laughs> oh, that bitch sound like a man. Y'all sure that bitch a girl? Y'all sure it ain't a man? I be like, bitch, let me tell y'all something. I don't look like a man, but I can fight like one. I'm going to tell you that one. I, I know feel. a lot of trans people, and the boobs don't look like that. Yeah, no, no. they ain't got these kinds of titties. They ain't got them kind. Yeah, yeah. they. But they said they had listened to the voice, but mostly it'd be kids on that little mm. comment show. I don't really care about it. I laugh, keep going. No, nah, I think they're, they're going to love you after this for sure. Yeah, it's okay, though. Yeah. And shout it's out okay. to my girl Hellcat for uh, Hellcat. lining it up. Yeah, yeah. she winded it up, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hellcat, she all right with me. Yeah, Hellcat, all right with me, though. She cool, yeah. Yeah, she cool. I like her. She got the... How many people you got working in here? So I, Maybe like eight four? on eight? an average day, oh. something like that. And then we got all store on Melrose, so too. So Shop do uh, podcasts, too, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. okay. So you got a whole big thing, huh? Yeah, we got a little, little movement. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Maybe I get in on it, like I said. Yeah. For sure. Let's talk about it. Um I appreciate you coming through, honestly. Yeah, Legendary. Definitely. I love the energy. I love the game that was yes. spit here. So what is that on the side of your face? Is that a teardrop? Uh, it's an upside down cross. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was a teardrop. I was going to say, how many bodies you got, Adam? No, no. no. So, <laughs> I don't document my bodies on my face. I keep so, it real, yeah, that, yeah, real that's low key. Yeah, really nice. So it's an upside down. Why upside down? Uh, you know, I'm a devil worshiper. Oh, no, you're not. No, nah, but I don't believe nah, God, nah. so. <laughs> You don't even look like that. You don't look like you. I can kind of map out the devil, bro. No, no, no. I don't believe in the devil. I just it's don't just, believe in God. It's just something you wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, old school. Anyway. Uh, all the okay. tattoos, you collect them over the years, and then 10, 20 years later, you're like, why do right. I got that? I don't know. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's, that's, that seem a little weird. nice. Your and teeth then, is nice. And then I'm stuck Those explaining it. Those are your teeth? It. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. I had braces in eighth grade. Oh, okay. Braces did you some good, huh? They didn't do me too well. Really? Yeah, I had to go to Columbia. Oh, okay. My shit, a lot of yeah. people tell me my teeth again. I had nice yellow. teeth. They were nice, but I wanted them. Even um, Mario, even he said it, like, why are you getting your teeth done? I, was, I just want them brighter, you know? Like, nowadays, if you don't have fake teeth, it's like people are looking at you like your teeth are fucked up. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> because anything less than the perfect <laughs> veneers is kind of... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I don't look at it like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Because you can still look at good teeth. It's just... Teeth always gonna have that little yellow tint. It's yeah. just gonna have that. I mean, we eat food every day. Even with these, if you drink coffee every and, day, and tea, much, stuff like that, yeah. yeah, it's gonna stain. It's gonna do these teeth the same. So you know what I do now in my old age is that I go to the dentist every three months. Oh, okay. No, I yeah. love it. I just love the the feeling of the having feeling, clean yeah, teeth. Clean but teeth. then they're also a little yellow, so I might have to interject with the the teeth whitening as well. Right, I go every six. Yeah, I, okay. I do. I go every six. So yeah, I was on that for most of my life. But so like, you like every three months. I just huh? started to realize. Yeah. You know what? I go to the dentist. It's right down the street. It yeah, takes me twenty teeth, minutes, forty five minutes, good whatever. Teeth. Real good teeth. I just yeah. love that feeling of being able to spit through your bottom teeth. Ooh, you know Adam, what I'm talking about? Adam, you something else. A little freaky. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 Adam spit through the teeth. Oh, oh shit. All right, Big 50, I appreciate you so much. Thank you, for real. Yes, I thank you, Appreciate too. your time. Everybody, 
Tap in. Tap uh, in. What's up, Big E? What's up? That's my son, Big E. He away right now. He'll oh, really? be back. Yeah, he he left. He had a year and a day. So he got skid beard. That's what you know. The niggas call that skid beard. Right, so the so, apple don't fall far from yeah, the tree. Yeah, but his the shit crab was apple. Out. You know, yeah. it's that it's the dumb shit. You know yeah. what the kids are doing today. Okay. So, but you know, he been working. He works for the automotive for like nine years. So mm-hmm. he just got caught up in something. He's a good kid. Shout out to Eric Matthews, Big E. That's my son. I love him. All All right. Right. Wait, mommy, waiting on you to come home next month. He's a spoiled boy. He's you got 30. a hell of a mom right here. He's thirty, but he's spoiled. He's my baby. He All said right. everybody in here know you. <laughs> wow, that's gonna be fun. Yeah, make sure he's not living off his mom's family no, too no, much, right? No, yeah, no, yeah. Uh-huh. Do he don't do that. Work. He worked nine, like I said, nine years. You know, of mm-hmm. work. You know, he works. For that sure. boy works. I always with all my children. They work. They work. And my daughter was a flight attendant for like seven years. Mm. You know, uh, my other son works. Uh, he drives the trucks for the liquor trucks. You know, mm. so all my kids work. I, I steal that in them, Adam. It's to work. You know, I love it. Yeah. Big Fifty, thank you so much. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, Instagram. Like, comment, and subscribe. No if you want to support.